especially coming from Plissar. You know, she came in, people were kind of skeptical, but later on down the line, she ended up becoming somewhat of a threat. But you want to talk about character shifting in the meta. I feel like a lot of people have been giving Potemkin a little bit more credit. And Dead Celebrity is going to be coming through on the Potemkin here as Nazra is rocking the Nagoriyuki. Yeah, I was going to say, Dead Celebrity though, off to an incredibly hot start. But Nazra is going to try and move the momentum into their favor with that back throw. Yeah, but here we go. Bloodsucking Universe. Time to party. Uh oh. Oh! I was going to say, like, the worst part about that Bloodsucking Universe isn't even the health. Really? Isn't even the health. It is definitely the blood. Yeah. Now we are seeing a ton of opportunities for Nazara, who's going to just come through and swoop this first round. Yeah, and just like that, exactly like you mentioned, right? The, the bite giving you access to so many more special moves allows you to get that overwhelming offense, which Nago has been so known for. And Potemkin, not having the greatest defensive options, right? He is a big body, slow character. Yeah, it's like he's slow, no dash. Jabs were abysmal, and now we're just bad. Trying to deal with this Nago offense is going to be so tough for Dead Celebrity. It's a little too far away though for that Roman cancel to actually connect. Really unfortunate. And now we're back in the square one. Back Mega Fist though. Yeah, we're talking Feels about those. The corner. Uh oh. Gonna have to force out the burst from Dead Celebrity. Has a little bit of health to work with. But when you're off a Temkin, that momentum could shift in your favor. But Nazara with the super yeah, might be enough to pull this. Oh, at least you have a. No yeah, no RC was oh, kind of no. crazy, but we take him to the skies with our own super, and this is not over yet. Uh-oh, that celebrity has a chance. Oh. Man, we thought that we could have seen something there. Didn't go for the RC continuation of the combo, but was able to close it out in what I would consider a nail-biter of a game one. Yeah, and that's a little scary, right? Not going for the RC there at the end just to get that final touch, because if you give Potemkin any breathing room, he just needs one correct guess. But... Smartly, Nazra backing away and realizing, okay, my normals are going to be able to chip out at this point. I just need to sit back and press my normals and end this match in a comfortable fashion. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like one of the things that makes Nago so good is just the fact that no matter what Blood Range you're at, you always have tools for the job. For sure. Oh, there we go. PSU coming out once again. You're going to be seeing that double time with a new character, but we are going to see what Nazra wants to do with it first. Yeah, we are putting ourselves really high up into the blood, just able to land those bites to save us from the blood rage. So far, just steamrolling dead celebrity here in this round. I was gonna say, like, I feel like, you know, very, very obvious observation, but, you know, uh, the BSU just opens up so many options for Nago and allows Nazar to just go ahead and steamroll through this set. Yeah, I mean, as Potemkin, you have higher health uh, than a lot of other characters, so it might be worth it to try and jump out of these situations, right? Even if you take a hit as a grappler, your life is currency. 100%. I mean, you look at things like that back Mega Fist as a defensive option for a lot of pop players. Oh, uh, but looking like we are going to force the first out from Dead Celebrity in a white wild cell for a hard knockdown. Yeah, and one thing we're not seeing a lot either from Dead Celebrity is Slidehead. Slidehead, I feel yes. like, is really good in this matchup because Nagos don't normally take to the skies a whole lot, right? Nago not having access to, you know, really good aerial options. I want to see more Slidehead coming out from Dead Celebrity if you're going to make this reverse 3-0. Yeah, it's like, I mean, like you're talking about, like, there isn't really an incentive to go in the air for Nago all that often, especially from full screen. You know, it becomes a situation of, okay... Worst case scenario, you know, we're zero from both screen, who cares? But best case, you get to get your pressure started. Yeah, and of course, also, Nago is like a one-hit character, right? He's the one-shot yep. character, meaning that he's not going to be able to break that armor really reliably. And speaking of armor, there it is. The hammer fall twice and in a row. Again, and the pop buster, like you're saying, Potemkin is quite the feast or famine character. The moment they get anything started, this could be more than a for Nazara unless they get something started. Yeah, Potemkin's Ooh. offense is so terrifying. The strike throw is just absolutely insane. And that is a quick first round here. Dead Celebrity finally showing some adjustments. Oh, man. Here we go. But Nazareth has shown why they have this lead in the first place. Already taking control in the second round. Gets a combo off of that White Wild Assault. Look, Dead Celebrity, you got a White Wild Assault too. Don't be afraid to use it. But here comes the Thousand Year Blood War. Going to get that hard knockdown. So close to death as well. Yeah, it's like just a season ago, these, this was the battle of the characters with no dash, but now it feels like they both have the most powerful dash in the game. <laughs> oh, there we go. Back to this. Fist. I love that. Getting a little too predictable on the offense, but the 5P talk to the hand. Set point now for Nazara. 
Yep, just barely fast enough to beat out that car pop buster. And now Dead Celebrity has a mountain to climb if they want to try and win this set. Back yeah, I like weathering again. the storm there, just trying to survive and allow them to push themselves deeper into blood. When he doesn't yeah. have access to special moves, that's when Potemkin can be a little bit more aggressive. I mean, that is that is true. It's like, you gotta definitely have a mentality of bend and not break when it comes to fighting Nagaryuki, like we are seeing Dead Celebrity try to do right now before they get grabbed by that BSU. Yeah, it looks like we got caught in a backdash attempt as well. Caught by the close slash and things are not looking good for Dead Celebrity. There's the White Wild Assault. Can we bring it back? We're not. Oh no, we all know that this is gonna kill. Get in that invincibility and getting that set, Nazara is gonna be the first person in TNS to move on in the winner's side. Leahi. Leahi? Leahi, I think that's what it is. I, I like Leahi. I think that, that I think that sounds correct, at least in my mind, like Lizard. Oh, the pink Bridget. I believe that this is uh, a very talented Bridget out of Texas. Uh, they did change the tag, but I do want to see if we are going to see that same level of dominance in this set. That's oofy, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, listen, that's oofy to you. Oh, oh but nice! The, the PRC, the PRC here. Here, bro. Uh, the throw off the PRC. Let's we'll see the conversion here. Try to break the combo. Gonna go into one more mix, but good block from Liahi. And then, yep, simple way to kill it here. Simple and clean, able to close it out. Let's see if we can keep that momentum going into this next round. That air throw, I feel like, really is where things started to snowball. Yeah, they Baleahi, keeping the pressure up. Uh-oh, not, it's like not looking the pressure up, but gonna be able to continue it now with positive bonus. But no hard knockdown in that neutral state. And, with, and when it, both of these characters, obviously, is the mirror, are gonna have tools that are so good in neutral, it's just gonna come down to those good old fundies. And it's looking like Laahi's gonna show that off here. Yeah, I, I thought for a second maybe they were thrown off by that air throw, but in this next round has come out swinging. So close to scoring a perfect here. Just has to find that final touch. Anything will do it, even chip damage. Yeah, it's like you could threaten the chip on the two, three, six, as you could threaten the chip on the scooter, or you could just get the clean hit. But Riley is gonna try to bring this one back from the ashes, getting things started with a counter hit close slide. It's gonna be real difficult though. YRC comes out, get off of me. Now you have to find another way in. And the oh. 2S is gonna be able to do it. Yeah, leaving a big enough gap to where Riley thought that they could mash. And being able to sneak in the 2S there. Outstanding play here from the Ahi to get these kicked off. Oh, immediate burst. Didn't want to hold that mix up at all. Respectable. All right, now you're yeah, yeah. starting to get cranked. Gets caught by the counter hit while assault. This is devastating. Oh, baits out the DP. And this might not be able to kill. Just barely not going to be able to. One more touch and hard knockdown. This game is looking like it's in the palm of Riley's hand. Especially with that rock the baby to close things out in game number one. Showing that off pretty early. That feels like one of those save it for nationals kind of resets, right? <laughs> Hey, I mean, you could also save it for just the most disrespectful play. Like, come on, not only are we gonna do the tick throw with the rock, the baby, we're gonna do it on a hit? What message is Riley trying to send right now? Yeah, that is kind of crazy. I think we were expecting the block, right? We were already like, okay, they're gonna block the overhead. I'm just gonna commit to the rock, the baby, make this a quick, easy, sick mix up. But it was even nastier off of the hit. There's the same brain cell at round start. <laughs> it's like, listen, the bridge. All of us bridges think the same, man. Like this, that round start is tried and true. Oh, that's like, like you said there. But we are seeing lots of what seems like similar yo-yo options. Lots of two, three, six. Just trying to get that one conversion and get things snowballed. Yeah, and that five H. Uh, we talk a lot in Guild Fear about how sometimes characters have. Uh, they're hard at dealing with their own nonsense, right? A lot of Bridget's nonsense is getting in with that rolling attack, getting in with the kicks from my heart. Five H is a really good stop sign for that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those slash and heavy slash normals are just so good on Bridget for making you making sure that you check yourself before you wreck yourself. And Ahi now is gonna take you through the wall. Gonna get yet another hard knockdown. Uh oh. DPRC, tried and true, was going to be a kill, but maybe Leahi thinks they're going to be able to bring this one back. Yeah, I mean, they have the meter to do it, right? They can score a hit and get into that set play, but the JK hitting from behind the back, the cross up normal. Ooh, man, it's like that JK is so tricky, not only because of its speed, but also because of the fact that there is a hitbox on both sides. 
Yo Yo coming right back. Give him layout. He just a little bit more to get pressure started. But the back throw from Riley is going to be enough to get something started of their own. Yeah, now this RC getting started with that overhead. Baits out the DP with a safe rolling attack, but misses the 5k conversion. God, that drop may be costly, especially when you're going against a Bridget with 50 to spend on that RC combo. Yeah, going coast to coast as well, but a beautiful 6p. Oh my god, we are swinging right now. No one wants to hold any pressure. I mean, that's honestly... Coming from one Bridget player, you know, kind of trying to analyze this match, the way that you actually deal with her pressure on, the, like, when you're playing in the mirror, is you have to do everything but block. And as you can see from Riley, that option, those types of options are putting in a ton of work as they're able to go up 2-0. Yeah, 2-0, but, uh, you know, it... It's the meme, 2-0, but it isn't free. Um, Leahi is really <laughs> keeping pace, though. Able to keep pace, just not able to close out these rounds in these more scrambly situations. That's where Riley is really pushing ahead. And also just really strong in the footsies department as well. Yeah, I mean, that is true. It feels like we're just seeing, you know, just maybe one more completed combo or one more correct decision that is determining these rounds. But... It's just showing that Riley does have the edge here. Barely able to squeak out both of these two games. Yeah, but there we go. Wild Assault to score the hard knockdown. Riley looking to run away with it. Get another 3 0. Yeah, they've got to hold this mix up. But Leahi thinks they can find a way out and only finds their way through the wall as Riley is going to sit on set point. Starting off with a nice, healthy amount of burst as well. Meaning that we do have access to that wild assault if we so desire. Yep, it's like, nah, we do have one on the chamber for Riley. We have one in the chamber for Eliahi. It may be more beneficial to use those and enforce the mix, but Riley has shown that you might not even need that. Oh, but here we go. Sent to the hard knockdown. Positive bonus, nearly 100 meter. No RC on that, surprisingly, but we go for the PRC for the mix-up option. Oh, it's like a lot of people don't really know about that mix-up, but you get a ton of frame advantage if you use the BRC on a hard knockdown. Let's see. One more wow. setup. Yeah. Into that 5D, the tap dust to close things out. Another 3-0 here at TNM. Dyslexia, I just read it wrong. All right, chat? It's all right. Not quite Cribby, the pink puff ball, but we are going to get a big old golden jacket wearing man in the gold Lewis. And it's looking like we got matching outfits here. Yeah, absolutely. It's coming to the function here. All uh -oh. right. Cribby on the gold Lewis trying to go for that behemoth typhoon pressure early on. Not going to work out. We got the air behemoth, which is not safe. Uh -oh, so, so what is it? It's going to be this hard knockdown. Now, the way that Viking is supposed to interact with this pressure does look pretty unga, but you have to rotate between that parry, between that fuzzy jump. You gotta make Gold Lewis scared to go for those Behemoth Typhoons. Yeah, and you gotta smother Gold Lewis with pressure as well. Not the greatest defense, of course. Uh, 2P is one of his best normals, and White Wild Assault really does set him above the rest now. Oh, wow. What a hit confirm. Are we gonna talk about the hit confirm off of a 2P? It is gonna be more than enough to take that round. Yeah, I mean, when you got the meter to do it, 2P can be a devastating normal. Wow, wow it's all coming out for Kribby. They try to get their pressure started, but gets hit with that stop sign 2P from Unga, man. And here we go. Just behemoth typhoon pressure over and over. Going for the plus ones to make sure that we can steal turns over and over. Love the PRC into the 2P. It's a catch-all normal. It's your counter poke. It's your anti-air. It does everything. Yeah, it pays my taxes. Maybe it's just my dog. It takes Ungaman to the next round, and Krivi is going to show off one for his own. Hey, I like that you mentioned paying taxes, because you know Gold Lewis is hunting down those taxes. Next week, chat, you better have them in, but for Gold Lewis is coming for you. April 15th is slowly approaching, and so is Karibi with this pressure coming through with the drone. No security, no bar, but barely gets it for the PRC. Oh, not even locked the YRC, though. Ungaman getting another opportunity at life. Into the back throw, keeping the tether on for the combo. Plenty to work with. Oh, mate. Breaks with the 6H. Might have wanted the wild assault there, but you'll just take the damage where you can get it. Oh, JS. No conversion off of the JS. That's all right, though. We score that counter hit behemoth. Send off the drone a little too uh, light on our gauge, though. Oh, no. That's going to be the OTG. More than enough for Krivy to just go ahead and take it. Not even needing to utilize that security. Just utilizing 
the big old coffin the man is swinging right now gonna go up Absolutely. one to zero man that otg gold lewis it's crazy how this character is just shot up to every single patch he's gotten better and better even when he was nerfed he still got some extra stuff to keep him strong or he was strong altogether and white wild assault is really what has pushed him into that top five conversation oh yeah i mean you just go down the different patches we have like the the infinite drone patch we have the white wild assault patch like it feels like this man doesn't even know what doesn't even know what below top five looks like yeah, not anymore. He used to do back in the day when Axel was a bad matchup, but those days are long gone. <laughs> All right, now we are going to see the JS come out from Ungaman. Has a little bit of a life deficit, but that's nothing that bike can sure can't solve. Not at all. Not going to be able to hit that 6-8, but that's fine. Still gets the conversion here. We want the wall break. 6-8, and now we are looking at one more touch. For, for Ungaman, I mean, Ooh. and it's going to be more than enough for that throw. That was a really interesting decision. A lot of meters spent there by, a lot of resources spent by Kribby to go for the White Wall Assault into PRC. Yeah, it's like, I mean, lots of, lots of resources by Kribby means that Ungaman is in an incredible spot. Having to deal with Gold Lewis is already pretty rough, but dealing with them dealing without resources becomes a much different game and one that's much more fortunate. Absolutely, but when you're stuck up against the wall like this, nothing is going to be able to save you. Kribby trying to go up 2-0. Oh, Ungaman coming into this round with full burst, though, so has a little bit of an edge. A little bit, especially on Gold Lewis. I feel like even not having 50, let alone not having your entire burst, becomes so much more potent because the threat of White Wild Assault is suddenly gone, and then Ungaman gets to, seems like they get to run to their heart's desire. Yeah, look at the damage off of that, catching the back dash. Not gonna quite be dead here. Gold Lewis is a bit of a beefy boy. Oh, okay. Okay, we're cool. Yeah. I thought that dropped for a second. Yeah, like that super is just so deceptive. But what isn't deceptive is that victory from Ungaman gonna tie up the set one to one here. Yeah, just like that, Avian, the 3-0 curse is broken early on. Not going to lie, I was kind of hoping it would carry on a little bit longer just to see a bloodbath here at TNS. But I do like my, you know, longer, evenly matched sets as well. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you're, I think that your hunger for blood is being satisfied with this match, especially. Like, this match, if you were to look up violence in the dictionary, you'd see these two duking at it. <laughs> For sure. Here we go, round start situation, just going for that JD. And oh! Bane, that, he was so high in the air when Ungaman sent out the burst as well. That has to feel terrible. Oh man, it's like maybe thought that they weren't safe, but it's looking like a gold lose round for Kribby. This man is on a tear right now in this first round. Uh-oh, but it's looking like Ungaman isn't out of it yet. Fat Lady has not sang, and now, oh, I thought that we were gonna get a bit of trouble there with that gun super, but White Wall is always gonna be more than enough. Oh, but the JD. I like that. You try to go for a cheeky little mix up with the JK, land a little too far away, and then immediately steal your turn back with the White Wild Assault. Sets up the drone to keep you honest. Oh man, it's just, we are just seeing a white wild assault masterclass here from Kirby. It's looking like we're getting all the uses. We've gotten it to we've gotten it to skip the neutral. We've gotten it to to threaten minus frames. It's like we've gotten it to extend combos. It feels like every single use of this Swiss Army knife is getting used right now. And Kirby is using that to go up in the set. Yeah, absolutely. Looking incredibly strong here. Just has been one step ahead of Ungaman, it feels like. And Ungaman's getting a lot of nice conversions, winning out a lot of neutral interactions, but just isn't able to catch up to the damage output that Kribby is setting out. And that White Wild Assault, of course, you know, it's the great equalizer. That's what everyone says. Yeah, I mean, that's why people say that Biken may not be as strong as people initially think. Is because she needs really specific hits to get those huge chunks of damage. But on Gold Lewis, it seems like they come on just about everything. For sure. <laughs> Any stray hit just hurts differently when it comes to Gold Lewis. But here we go. Keeping that pressure up. We have plenty of meter. Send out the moon. Yeah. Look at that. They're covering up more than the sun. I'm looking like it's covering Gold Lewis health bar as well. For the BRC into the throw. OTG for the kill. And there we go. Ungaman. Ungaman. Taking another round.
trying their best not to fall into the loser side of the bracket. I do respect to cut Kirby. You see it on the other side. Trying their best to advance on. Only needs two more until they move on. Oh, we are being wow. very, very patient there trying to bait out the burst. And I mean, when you have such a huge life lead, why not? We're seeing some crazy burst base though from Kirby. Most people, when they want to beat the burst, they usually try to go for a route that might be a little safe. And even though Gold Lewis doesn't quite have those, he does have apparently the White Wild Assault to barely clip Unga Man trying to ID over. Yeah, the moment that you mess up in neutral, that, that's a big thing about Kribby. Whenever he whiffs something or messes something up in neutral, we are just sending the White Wild Assault to make up for our mistake, and it's catching Uncle Man off guard trying to get their own turn. What a walkout. Is this man playing BBFZ right now? I haven't seen those in years. Yo, this is where Unga Man oh. is. Drops bait out the deep, like, deal with the patient, and this should be enough to kill. And yes, chat, the song is Ride the Fire. That didn't combo. It dropped. Oh, that no. did not combo. Wow. <laughs> the thing you were scared of before finally happened. <laughs> the, the, the Moon Super not going to quite be able to pick out. But, you know, Kirby found a sleep at the wheel. It's going to be more than enough for Unga Man to tie it up and take us to a game five. That is why you always keep your hands on the stick at all times. Even when you're being hit, you are holding block. It doesn't matter for opportunities like that. Yeah, that's like, gotta make sure that we're on tedded too, because those things can always happen. You know, you're sticking out the hand for the GGs and then suddenly the combo resets and you're getting cooked again. Oh, JD. JD has been a really consistent option here for Kribby at round start. I mean, I do not blame them. See those BTs flying. Tries to throw. Maybe we saw a wild assault, but or the reflect shield that works too. Oh, that rock could have been crazy. But we are gonna need to see something outstanding from Ungaman to take this route. Yeah, make sure we keep this pressure consistent here. We don't let Kribby get out for free. The drone's out. That means we're escaping from the corner. Oh, There's no. the JS. Oh, with the big Melia. Close it out around. There's the JH on the other side. Gonna go ahead, like you said, close that out. And now Kribby is sitting on match point. Oh, double IB, but we are still gonna be able to get the tether off. The JD is gonna neutralize any sort of offensive threat that Unga Man tried to present. I love that YRC, but what a 2P. The moment that you see your opponent go to the air, 2P is such a good option. Low committal, really fast normal. Axe is an anti-air, oh, there's the throw, stealing your soul. Oh, that far isn't gonna quite be able to combo and gets clipped by the wild assault. Not quite gonna be able to finish off the combo, but <laughs> you know what? Kirby is gonna go ahead and take that game by. <laughs> I think we were expecting incredible. And coming up here, we are gonna have a Joe show versus classified. So we aren't too sure who it's gonna be. Yeah, it's like I mean, if they're classified, I'd assume this. <laughs> <laughs> Just the blacked out bar? <laughs> <laughs> but, so it's looking like we've got, like you say, got Joshua. Has shown their medal in online tournaments. And Watermelon Soda is a name that I see online. Curious to see how their medal will be tested in an environment like TNS. We'll have to see. They do have that blue aura. That means they definitely play a lot. Goes immediately for the reversal spinning dog kick, taking a chunk off of Nago's life bar. Barely getting clipped there by the Beyblade. So little blood for Joshua to work with. How are they gonna try to make it work? Oh, BC Yuza, you know, it's a good little option to get that thing kicked off. Now sitting at zero blood. Beautiful protect there, trying to bait out that anti-air option with the IED back, but instead, Joshu just opts to Fukio forward, send out all of the blood we possibly can to close it out. On the offensive. Once again, gonna get their meter eaten though. As White Wall Assault Ooh. is counter hit. That oh, was no. a little uh, a little finicky there, right? Squirrely. I feel like a close slash hit on the wrong side. Classified still tried to commit the option, but not gonna matter. They're gonna get a massive punish here. Depending on the routing, they can finish it. There it is. Oh man. Had so, had such little time on the timer left to spare. What an optimized and practice route from Classified to keep things even here. Again, talking about optimization. Gonna take Jojo all the way to the corner and break the wall on round start. Yeah, no hard knockdown. 
which means that you have to play against Nago in neutral. Always a scary thing, especially when he's sitting at higher blood. Oh my god, oh. the 5-H! Oh no, that 5-H was disgusting. And it's gonna be what Josho feels like they need to get off and start it. But Classify is trying to get their way out. Oh, I was about to say, watch out for that anti-air. Oh, no. Gold burst, though. Oh, if you want to... I guess what momentum started, this is the way to do it. Gonna go for the guard break. Are we gonna see the fuzzy jump? We see the throw tech, and the 6P is gonna be what takes it for Josho. Yeah, we're trying to go for a classified is trying to go for some tricky stuff there with the BRC. We saw that earlier when it got blown up by the 5H, this time getting blown up by the 6P. I feel like maybe we should, you know, pull things back just a little bit and go for more consistent, safe pressure options. As Cracker2122 comes in with the five months and 60 animal drops $10 into the match. Reno, thank you both so much for the support. Supporting the channel, supporting the players. You guys are going way too hand. We can't thank you enough. And what's the reward? More great matches, I think. Absolutely. It's not going to stop here. It's only going to get better as we go. We were fishing with that 6P. It just does it again. Oh, my goodness. But it's able to get the 5P anti here for their troubles. Oh, no. That guard rush is so scary. Even though it's minus two, it feels like the options that Nago gets are still so scary. This conversion, the amount of damage on a blue beat combo. Now your back is up against the ropes. How is Josu gonna get out of this one? Blocks the fuzzy. Might have messed up their pressure there. Oh, BRC. So here's what you're trying to scare him there. Gets the BSU. Why is he in the air coming down with buttons as well? Like the decision a lot, but gets caught by the Beyblade into the 6H. Once your life is low, you're still gonna get put into that Mario Party minigame. Once that first special move is out the things that Joe show does it just looks like minecraft man it's like <laughs> just the way that you get to build your own adventure set up your own pressure is one block at a time i'm saying oh but not gonna end things there with a super wants to hold on to the meter after the wall break but again that's kind of been a mistake i feel like going back to neutral here against Joe show oh yeah it's like i mean against Dr. Yuki in general going back to that neutral state would usually hurt, but if you can finish this off with that BRC overhand, you're looking at a good spot, but it's not going to quite be able to be enough. Yeah, no, but that's fine. Catch them sleeping with the cross up overhead. Classified been holding on to that one, really only using it in a combo so far. Yeah, I mean, it's, it feels like we are at that similar crossroads where we are just seeing incredible play from both players and one decision like that shimmy. It's what Sligerly is going to put him over the edge. Barely is able to break the wall there. That's yeah, stuck way up north. But look at this. I love just kind of maneuvering back and forth to make sure you don't get the negative penalty and build oh. up that meter over time. But great defense from Joshu. Can we mount a comeback? Oh, it's like now with whip speed. As he used, we can't. Going to keep him trapped here in the corner. And baits the burst. You're still alive. It's like not going to quite be able to kill. One more touch here all with the hard knock. That should be easy enough to get, and Josho sure does. The 2K2D option, going for uh, the most blood efficient route that you possibly can, right? Was maybe just a little bit worried that if we went for Fukio into the DP mix-ups, that if Classified survived that, we were going to pop and lose it all. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It's like that blood management becomes so much more important, especially when you are in those low situations, because... The punish that you have to get becomes way easier. You could probably just charge us and kill him, right? It's like, so you need to be very, very proficient with your blood usage there. And Joshua shows that off to perfection. Duel one. Let's rock. All right, the round star. White Wallace off right off the bat. White Wallace all coming out. See a wild assault from Giovanna as well. And it's going to take you all the way to the corner and send you right through that wall. Oh, with 6P here, gonna get blown up. There's the guard crush. We go for the OTG option. We're just trying to keep the offense as fast as possible. We got the JP, oh, but no. we didn't commit. That's fine. Wasn't expecting them to get hit by the fuzzy. He's gonna be able to pick up the kill, but against Nagaruyuki, making mistakes like that can get fatal. Yeah, absolutely. Another big body character, a little bit on the slower side, right, when it comes to mobility. But. Even though the mobility is on the slower side, you miss something up, you're right in their face. All those 6Bs coming out trying to catch something. 
really just throwing it. We've been constantly <laughs> doing that throughout the set as well. That's been our neutral option. Just throw out 6P when we're at far range. Oh, Doesn't no. Again, but this time, force the block. Yeah, the Joshua is really out here. Just doing whatever he wants. And it's going to end it off with the uppercut. Doing anything he wants here is putting him at set point now. Hazelhide has a long ways to go. If they want to try to run this back, this is a great start, but no burst against Nagaryuki is scary. Going to try and make it work with the meter, and that's going to be more than enough. Absolutely, here we go into the super. Going to be able to get the kill. No! Oh, no! Oh, he is a beefy guy. Look at the size of those pecs. Oh, he tries to go first. You can tell that he has been hitting the gym. And now Joshua is going to get a chance to try and make this a clean 3-0. Yeah, the blood is high, meaning we don't have access to a lot of our super, super scary pressure. And the trade is going to do it with the 5-H classified. Finally getting a point on the board, Avian. There we go, Jobber. We have got ourselves a match. We have moved away. Long gone are the times of the sweep. It's looking like we are getting some battles now. Absolutely. Here we go. Going to jump right into it. Let's see if classified watermelon soda Harry Styles can keep this up. It's like, man, I mean, we're see we're starting to see the stuff that we needed to see earlier on in the set from classified. Especially like with those optimizations, making sure that their mix is down tight and being able to hold down the fort when Nagaryuki is pressuring you all led to that victory in that last game. Oh, the double dash into the far slash though. Like that, all right. Time to strike and throw. Are we gonna strike or are we gonna throw? It's looking like strike is the option we're going with. Yeah, able to get that shimmy on the Wow! wow. <laughs> that That's the power of counter hit far slash on Giovanna. That super just taking a chunk off of Nagaryuki's life. There was not a part of me that thought that was going to kill at all. But Josho answering back, taking 50% of classifieds help with one confirm there. Oh yeah, I mean, that's like revving up the engines to continue through that wall break. But uh, looks like you got stopped in your tracks there, Jobber. Oh, but the go forward, a little bit of a mistake. Nice escape from classified. First gauge is high though. This might clash. Oh, or you just get enough time to PRC out the knowledge from Josho and the DP follow up to close it out. Josho is on set point right now. Yeah, the spacing was perfectly on point as well, recognizing that even after whipping the first bit, the DP, the second one would reach far enough. Went for the full Fukio there. Doesn't matter, able to swap sides. Yep, take him through the wall. This is gonna be a big chunk of damage. Gonna be the hard knockdown. And don't forget that Nago still has a Wild Assault in the tank. Oh, don't remind me. That's terrifying. There's the back dash. Might not even need it. Oh! Tried to make out the burst, but didn't delay long enough. Wants that burst so bad. And now it's looking like we can see the comeback happen, especially with a starter like that. Delays the burst. Yeah, we're punished. He was so oh. close it out, but the fight into the RC is going to be enough to do it. 3-1, Joshu takes it. Wow, a nail-biter game number four, but it is going to go on over to Joshu and a Naga representative. But let's see, Fern22 yeah, versus like Ranichu is going to be our next so match so here. Of, man, it's like Fern22, oh, our a very, very notorious Thai player coming out from Southern California. Shout out. To the west coast. Red and Jihak coming through. I love the name. Pound back dust. That deflects you. Oh man. Alright, we got some Asuka though. I will say, I feel like we all haven't seen much Asuka. At least as at least as the world tour, you know, that's what Pep showed up. Shows that NA still does have some Asuka. And maybe Rainu Shihan can be one of those as well. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, that's what space is due to me. I'm like, hold on. I know I'm pronouncing this name wrong. It's Rain Uchiha. All right. <laughs> it's been a quick minute since I've seen some Naruto, but the pressure has been insane. There's the far slash to close things out. Yeah, like that first round was incredible. And I will say, we have some of the better round start tools coming out from Rain Uchiha. Burns the Screamer immediately, but has plenty more cubes on deck to make some things absolutely disgusting happen. Well, the cubic warfare here is absolutely insane. Burn not having an answer for this pressure. 
Asuka, of course, a really difficult character to pilot, but when you have the right hand, my god. Exactly. Just like those card games, the moment that you get that god line, no one can stop you. And Rainshio is showing it off in that first round. He's gonna be able to see if they can close it off in the second round. Oh, but there's the trade, scoring the hard knockdown here. Able to get all of that mana back, still sitting on nearly a full hand. Oh, oh. wow, that overhead was kind of nasty. That had potential to be something crazy. Not quite able to pull it out, but it's going to mulligan. So that is going to go through all of it. Oh, I have never 360. No scope coming through with the $10 in the match. Reno, thank you for the support. There's the cross up with the JS. Tries to go for a throw this time, but way too far away. No punish. I was going to say, I was like, there was no punish on the throw. And now it's looking like Fern can try to make a comeback here. Oh, uh, yep. But what's really difficult there, you saw Rain Uchiha was basically out of mana and out of cards, or didn't have the mana to cast the cards, so really had to rely on those normals. Even Asuka's normals, they aren't, they aren't too bad, but the, when the cards are the main part of your kit, you've got to have access to it. Yeah, and when you're going up against a character who's the king of neutral, like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's like, Kai's neutral. That, that, we don't even gotta talk about that. Everyone just knows about the devastation that Kai is able to apply in the neutral game and Fern showing that off as if he's listening to the broadcast as he's playing. Yeah, and Fern doing a really good job recognizing that Rain Uchiha was out of mana and keeping the aggression going. You saw Rain tried to charge a little bit of mana there at expense of life, but Fern kept the pedal to the metal, absolutely smothering them with offense. Absolutely. I mean, the one thing that we know Fern for down in SoCal, and maybe even on Twitter, if you see him over there, is just that his offense, as you already saw, was incredible, but his conversions are even more stellar. It feels like any hit this man gets, you're going to be feeling that not only in game, but out of game as well. Oh, wow, how did he steal the corner there on that IED? Oh, the delayed PRC there, still gets caught, clipped by the 2D. Oh, we're going for a lot of TK uh, cards here. Really interesting decisions from Rain Uchiha. There's the Mulligan, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah, got, sometimes you need a better hand. And when you think about it, sometimes you got to spend money to make money. You're able to Mulligan for those cards that give you meter, but it's not going to matter when Fern is sticking to you like glue. This, like, this is gonna be more than enough for wall breaks. Even yeah, with no Asuka, yeah, but even with Asuka's, uh, you know, even with that shield going on, they still doing a nice little chunk of health. Let's see, trying to get in over the staff. Goes for the wild assault combo to push ourselves the wild assault pressure. I say to push to the corner. The one thing you gotta notice: look at how low the mana is here for Rain Uchiha. Able to get some back, spending a little bit of bar. He's gonna be able to take him through the wall. Ooh, and just immediately sniped there with the cube. Beautiful backdash oh, blowing up man. the throw attempt. No, oh, the backdash is good. This is my kill. Not gonna quite be able to. The armor from Asuka is gonna put in more than its fair share of work. Blocks the tap dust and has no more attacking cards to work with. Fern is gonna take the round and Fern is gonna take game number two. Yeah, and dying with a hundred meter like that as Asuka is tragic, right? Not being able to mulligan, not being able to do anything there. I mean, I was nearly expecting to see a, a dark magic attack super immediately into the card draw super to try and, you know, re-establish something there at the end. But it just ended up being a little bit too much for Rain Uchiha to manage. Yeah, dude, just the, like you said before, the smothering pressure from Bird 22 has just been... It's just been putting Rain Uchiha on a chokehold. Like, it feels like every time that Rain is trying to get something started, there's a Kai Far Slash or a Kai Close Slash with his name on it. We have one attacking card. Is able to use that and draw two more. And now, oh no. Now on mana cooldown, the health is going to be so scary. But Rain Uchiha. That 2P into RC, classic pressure. But there we go, sliding right on in. Gonna get the wall break, positive bonus here on Fern's side. Yeah, it's like, has the hard knockdown. But because of the fact that the mana is back, it's looking like Rainer Shiat can take at least a couple more hits. Uh oh, a little, little bit of a later burst. Just trying to get some mix, but the DP from Fern to keep things going. Seems yeah, a little really 
no respect on the offense here. Fern smells the blood in the water and is trying to take a bite. Oh, no. Look at this pressure, it's unstoppable, and finally something's got to give. Gets clipped by the far slash. Help. I mean, Jobber, what are you supposed to do to get out of something like that? It feels like there were no chances to get out. He even tried to stick out a 2P and still ended up getting counter hit. Fern's pressure has been immaculate this set. We have a great hand as well, but will we get the opportunity to use it? Pretty low on mana. Pretty low on mana. Might try to keep the DP on deck, though. But now doesn't even have enough mana to cast it. Has to try to find a way to get that back with an angry fern on their tail. Yeah, and forced to spend their meter as well to make sure they don't get hit by the sacred edge. That is really devastating because now you are locked out of being able to go for that card draw. Speaker. Oh no, the DP, even though they got the meter back, this should oh, be dead. more than enough to kill. Oh, easily. And Ferd is going to sweep through this match with a clean three to zero. Yeah, and a really fun tournament. And thank you to Minty as well. Five dollars in the match arena. Minty right. doesn't even have to do that. She's the one running the stream, all right? She's putting her own money into the pot. So thank you. Well, it's time to jump into this. So we got Larry going on here versus Megurara. I feel like Lurie is one of those names that we have seen continuously on the rise, traveling out to everything, as well as entering these online brackets. Now with the foul. I feel like, I feel like this game should be switched, right? Lurie is the foul. Yeah, no, no, Lurie's Lurie got a bike it now. You didn't hear? Oh, really? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I was gonna say, we April Fools? I thought that was like, seven days ago. Yeah, Larry, that, that was a while ago, all right, but we are gonna see this. The Lurie Faust. Megarara biking. Oh, tries to go for the BRC overhead, but good defense for Megarura. Oh, not even wanting to deal with the item there. Goes for the Ozansen, able to score a nice big conversion. So much damage off of that tether. One more that hit here. Tried to go for something cheeky there, maybe some sort of mix up, but now Lurie's gonna get a chance to run some offense as well. Might get neutralized by that super, and damn sure it does. Easy. An incredible display here for Megarura to take first blood in this set. Ooh, we're going to the other side as well. Gonna be able to get the counter hit off of the Tommy map for the big jungle. Not a whole lot off of Fine though, still dashing in. We're just going for a lot of micro dashes because we know Faust poke game is incredibly strong. Like I said, we are seeing that incredible poke game. Oh, one of the conversion. Oh my god, Megarura is on a tear right now. Gonna force out the burst from Larry. Has one more chance and is gonna spend it on the good old slot machine. Trying to close the gap here. JTK is gonna wow. get blown up by the dash of 6P. That dash of 6P working out multiple times there from uh, Megarura. Oh my goodness, I feel like... I don't know what to say, but Megarura just seems to have all the answers. Whenever Larry's in the air, there's a 6P. Whenever... They're able to just barely catch Lurry standing up. A tether is already sitting there waiting for them. Like, how is Lurry going to be able to navigate this? Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, you mentioned anytime Lurry's in the air, there's that 6P. It, being able to react to the 6P that fast against Faust J2K is really impressive. Yeah. It's just so, it's like, it's just so ridiculous. But Lurry is saying that they are not out of this thing yet. You gotta give them the buy one, get one free haircut. Oh, oh, no. oh no, apparently missed the JD. Yeah, but still able to recover there. Car break coming very soon. Just tossing out as many items as possible. The oh, mayhem no. isn't stopping. Gonna sell out even more items. I don't know if this is a tilt player, if this is the legitimate strategy, but it seems to be working just fine for Lurry. Bro, I don't even know what was on screen there at the end <laughs> after we threw out the super. The Megarua fighting back. Lurie losing that offense that we had. There's the overhead into the fast RC, saving so much meter in the process. Wow, even though we did see an incredible gambling display by Lurie. What in the world? That backed as BRC coming back in with the punish. What a display of defense here from Megarura. That 5D looked like it should have hit, to be honest with it, you. The bat was on Viking's head, and it feels like she just was able to navigate around it. You know what? I don't think Mega Rue is going to be complaining about that. Uh, hello, Arctic Smart? <laughs> <laughs> we need more Faust clubs, please. No. no. <laughs> he, he, he can stay right where he's at, if we're being honest. <laughs> oh, there we go. Love Bomb comes on out. 2H is going to clip. Uh -oh, Ooh, they're trying to advance their way into this. I 
to Meguru doesn't seem to have all the answers. But if Lurie is able to get the right string of items, then there's nothing that Faust will not have an answer to. Yeah, but here comes the wait. Able to score wow. the knockdown. Has to go for this fixed age. Full on reel in. We have the meter to close it out. Yep, it's like that's gonna be more than enough to close it out. That is a forget about it moment. Especially, like you said, with that 50, no doubt that was gonna go. All right, early burst there from Mega Rura. Wants yeah, to just fair. have the early momentum here in the match. And barely getting out space. And like we said, Lurias also just has pretty good answers. They're trying to navigate the item economy. Pops yeah. out even more. I really like just sending out as many items as we possibly can. Wow, the 2K there reaching up so high. Uh, I love it. I feel like Faust just has the anti built in. Like, it feels like whenever he does anything, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, here's this super disjointed aerial hitbox. Yeah, he's got some of the best anti airs in the game. 2K, 5K, 6K, they're all absolutely incredible. But right now, an anti air isn't going to stay you in the middle of that combo. And Megarura going up. 2-0. Again, a lot of these 2-0 matches have been so incredibly close. Man, it's like, like you are saying, it feels like every single time we end up in a 2-0 situation, it feels like it could be anybody's game. And one final minute decision is what ends up closing out the round for one player or another. We do need to see some tiny adjustments from Lurie, but I feel like tiny is all that we need to see. Yeah, but let's see if we can pull this off here. Really, I mean, none of this is just a discount. The absolute clinic that Meguru has been able to put on right now. But Lurry has been keeping pace. That's the thing. Lurry has had a lot of impressive plays so far here in this set. Sending out mini fouls, but he's just going to walk on off. You already know that both of these players are putting their blood, sweat, and tears into this set just with the level of reads, the level of awareness we've got going on on the screen right now. We've got the boys cheering for both of them in chat. Oh, but the IED is going to get sniped by the JS here from Mega. I really like that we're seeing Lurie ducking, crawling underneath, the, uh, crawling underneath the chain, right? Yes. And I like Lurie's are just not free. Yeah, I was going to say, like, being able to react by just holding down forward is the perfect way to do it. Because you actually get way more frame advantage than trying to jump it. Alright, throwing more items. This is the Lurie show that we have seen so far. There's the hot potato, another one coming out. We got two on deck now. And the Avro sets up something disgusting here. Or oh, oh, the combo! No, the Afro Bombo. Rare, but it happens sometimes. I like the double jump. Oh man, the RNG gods are blessing us here. Yep, more bomb tennis. Whoa. And Three it's looking bombs. like we got a couple more rounds to play. What is Larry gonna do with these bombs? He's gonna sick the children on you and take the first game of then, the set. And this throws out another bomb for good measure, just getting it out of their system. Yeah, it's like it's like I heard that heard that King Jobber guy likes bombs, so let me just uh, let me just throw one more out for the one time. <laughs> yeah, just make sure he's got the message. That's one of the things about Faust. As Faust, it's hard to be consistent, right? Especially in Strive. In other games, Faust has just such good moves without items altogether. In this game, he struggles a little bit, but having good item RNG can really push you off the edge, like we saw there. Yeah, it's like, even if, it's like even with the good item RNG, you got to know how to play around it. If you're pulling out a million meteors a set, but you don't know how to use them, then it's only as good as chip damage, you know what I'm saying? Wow, J2K. fuzzy J2K. Right. More pressure from Lurie. Great mash from Megarura. And that's going to be set point for Megarura. All right, let's see if we can close things out. That was a pretty quick round. Now they only need one more to take it. And what many will consider upset. Isn't able to combo him with the bomb. But the home run is going to do more than enough damage to make it work. All right, but right now we're in kind of control here. Able to get the bomb out. Hey, I'm going to take you down with me. Six H mortal counter. That's the round. Lurry oh, staying alive no. again. It's like Lurry able to fight his way out of match point once again. He's going to try to take us to a game five. On the other side, we do see that Guerrero wants to close out the set with a convincing 3-1. 
Going to the 5D here to break the wall. Oh, all these trades are so scary. Lurie still has access to burst here. Let's but the meter in disadvantage play. might be too big. There's the super. It's going to connect. Yeah, it's like, don't quite got a DP, but got something close to it. Oh, no. That was... Ah, we're still good. Just needs to find a single touch. Even a trade will do it. And there's the 6P on the Wild Assault. The RC there into the Wild Assault was really interesting. Uh, Mega Rare was definitely trying to escape from the bomb. Didn't want to be pushed blocking give up any of that pressure. So, spending a lot of those resources, but I liked it. Came out on top 3-1. Saftig, Josho, Cheerio, and Druis. Shameless Narcal plug. Let's go, Afo. Going out there. Getting it done. All right, man. It's like Levant Lazi said, we see MFCR, we see sometimes like Zinkai Canada. It's looking like we are getting things off to a hot start for our top 48. Yeah, so Sid, Victor, Big Melia versus regular Melia here. Gets put the melee with the overhead. Uh, of course, the fly versus the fly swatter. I have a hot take. Uh, I feel like after the last patch and the inclusion of Artemis, uh -huh. I think um, I think Melia is better than Chip, to be honest with you. <laughs> hey, I mean, I can't blame you. I feel like. It's like, I feel like Artemis has definitely opened up a lot of new avenues, but the gameplay that Milia is able to do, especially in a killing game like Guilty Gear, and with moves like Artemis, you know, she's original within the tier list. Yeah, but it doesn't matter though, when you're up against the force of the Secretary of Absolute Defense. It's the fly versus the fly swatter. That is a hell of a fly swatter there that he's got. It's looking like you got to change his titles to the Secretary of Offense because oh, the way that Sid Victor is just able to apply this pressure has been outstanding. But Vega is trying to put on a little light show of their own with that disc and one more mix up to try to close this out. And Rami putting on the sub as well. 29 months. Thank you for the support as well as Lord Angry coming through with the $10 into the match, Arena. Thank you. We love you. We have lots of support all around and a win all around for both players. We are tied up in the round count. Yeah, and this Holy Order 3 going kind of hard as well. There's the knockdown. Ooh, I like it landing, creating a little bit of, you know, tension there by walking backwards and then going for the throw and knowing that the disc is going to push them into throw range. Oh no, the White Wild Assault is stuffed. And not only is that a problem because you're 2k TD by Milia, but now you have so much less burst to work with unless she builds it right back. <laughs> Oh. He missed 5D after the fast star speed. That was tragic. It looked like maybe the bad moon caught Sid Victor in jump startup. I think that, that might have been the case. And we see the new move on display. And Artemis, such a unique move. Strong here for Millie. Able to block a goal burst, but not able to punish. Oh no. It's an even game right now. One touch for both players. <laughs> Looking like it. No, 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 it's all right. It's take all it. right. Oh, he and... didn't have any meter. That was at least you know, 1.5 touches. <laughs> but it's like it's going to be one touch from the JS to take it for Mr. Vega. Like I said, both players showing off some crazy stuff. We saw an incredibly dominant round first by Sid Victor. Then we saw an even more dominant round with a perfect coming out from Vega. Yeah, looking incredibly clean. And we got to see that Artemis, that new special move, like you mentioned a little bit earlier. One time there, but we still haven't seen it utilized in those. But I feel like is one of the strongest aspects of the moves. The Artemis loops in the corner give Melia so much damage potential now. It's like, man, like I, I've been seeing the clips all over Twitter. I'm like, man, why is this character doing 60%? I feel like that's not the point. She's got it now. You better pray to God you can get put in the corner. There's a nice 2P pressing out. Goes for the first to maintain the offense. You gotta pray to make sure you don't get in, and that prayer's gotta be even louder if you wanna try and get out. Milia's corner game now is definitely a force to be reckoned with. I like the way that Vega is using Artemis as a disengagement tool to create a little bit of space, and it's like a counter poke. If you try to poke out, Artemis will blow you up. Oh, yeah. So we already know that very little preparation means that, that, that means that Artemis is an incredible combo tool, especially as a starter. Yossi Victor trying to get something started now, but he's going to get stopped short by that JS. Beautiful wow. conversion. Spending everything we got to get the kill. I cannot believe that I killed, to be honest. But you know what? Vega damn sure knew that it was going to kill. And now they're going in here with a pretty sizable lead. 
5B, break the wall. We're going back to neutral, but still, yeah, like you said, Vega, life bar is completely full. Oh, no. Walking back there. Sid Victor is going to have a chance here. And we all know that on Gold Lewis, one shot is all that you need to get something started. Yeah, especially this close to the corner. But we're holding on to that burst for dear life. I think the moment that we get touched, we are spending it. Well, great defensive sequence from Kid Victor. Oh, you're and dead. now that's going to be rewarded with a guaranteed kill for Sid Victor. Yeah, if you get hit by 2, 6, 8, Behemoth Typhoon, you might as well just get in bed. Because it's good night. <laughs> it's like, all right, man. I can, I can sleep very well knowing that this is going to kill. Let me just lock in for the next one and just uh, keep it moving. Yeah, brave counter poke though through the Behemoth Typhoon startup. Oh, goes low. Yeah, we are going to see the Milia game plan enacted. Wow, what a use of the Artemis. And he utilizes plus frames. And that was a tricky little IED to get the offense continued. Oh, too far away though to get a lot of confirms. So we have to dash on in, get the throw. Oh. And the cross up. What side was that? Was was that? We already know, baby. To those of you who don't know, if you IED and then do capital, it is a guaranteed cross-up, but it is incredibly hard to predict, incredibly hard to block, and it's incredibly hard to take the loss after it hits you. Vega is going to go up two to zero. Yeah, I ain't blocking that shit. It <laughs> 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 ain't happening at all, bro. I remember I was sitting in call when, uh, when local Millie Zedadai was labbing it out, and he's like, all right. I need to hit you with the mix. I'm like, what do you mean by that? He's like, listen, you're going to go into the corner and try and block. I didn't get it a single time. Yeah, no, it's it's absolutely disgusting. I feel like some melee players don't even know what side they're hitting. That's real Marvel vibes, all right? <laughs> it's like, listen, it's like, I, I, I know I did a mix up. Whatever side it's on, that's for you to figure out. Oh, wow. Yo, 2 0 lead here from Vega. As Clob wet speaking, speaking of the 2 0, a big old 2 0 from. Club donate twenty dollars to the match arena to get these players fed. I mean, honestly, if I saw these matches, I'd be inclined to donate too. Like, look at the bloodbath that we've been seeing from both sides here. Look at the chip damage too. Oh my Vega god! Vega just out of meter now. Finally gets clipped again. Down with the system putter in the coffin. Now, can we call that a two touch if they got hit two times, even though there was about 40% chip? Or, I don't yeah, know how we classify it. All right. All right. Nice. And then a little, nice little two touch there from Sid Victor. As far as I'm concerned. Nice. <laughs> Jumping out. Able to get the punish with the throw. Oh, no. This is where it gets so scary. You see the worst part about the gold lose pressure? The chip damage wallet is bad. You're losing out on all of your meter because you just got to try anything to get him out. Wild assault. We are looking at an incredible lead. Or Vega is gonna get cut dramatically by this down with the system. Right, I think this is gonna kill too. Yep, hit him with the septum. And that's gonna be more than enough, not even needing to break the wall to deal the finishing blow to Sid Victor. Alright, immediately disengaging. Trying to look for some whiff here. That's a big thing in a lot of gold with matches. Trying to get into whiff so you can score those punishes. Getting gold Lewis to whiff is no easy task, especially with the deceptive hitboxes on a lot of his moves. But when you are able to do it, you are rewarded handsomely. Might be a here. Oh, unless I am mistaken. Is Winger going to kill here? That is a question for the ages. Not quite going to be able to kill. One more touch, but that's all Gold Lewis needs sometimes. Oh, but the PRC into the oh, air. Oh, no. We talked about what we need sometimes. This might be it. But the Gold Burst shutting down Sid Victor's dreams. Vega takes it. What a response to the incredible offense from Sid Victor. Able to get that gold burst and able to capitalize on those plus frames I've experience with this playing against slayer for the first time is always just a treat correct <laughs> absolutely i mean as a slayer player myself <laughs> i know i'm gonna have fun but here we go look at this truce up against cheerio oh, this man. sucks for sure <laughs> yeah i was gonna say i was like when the oh it did suck but you know what sucks even more is getting that three teleport stack as druids you gotta find a way to get those out of your head as quickly as you can 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, Cheerio is one of the best Cold Lewis's in all of North America, right? So, has had to go through this matchup plenty of times, but oh, this man. is just disgusting with the Black Hole Staff out. It is Cubic Mayhem as Slash comes through with the raid. Thank you so much, Slash. Hope your stream went well. Shout out, Slash. My Habibi coming through with the raid, and we're seeing Drew come through with the pressure. Here comes the laser. You've got to figure out a way to deal with this. And it's looking like the teleport is going to be what Drury's needed to get out, but the White Wild Soul is going to chase him down. Oh my god, there's the counter hit. Should be able to get the kill here. Yep, into the wall splat. One more behemoth. And all you need is one right guess. The laser is so good in this matchup as well. Burn it down, right? Being able to just kind of circumvent that neutral and not even having to deal with a lot of the nonsense that that man is sending out. Oh, 100%. I mean, I also feel like what separates Cheerio from the rest of the Golders players is their ability to capitalize on the one touch just becomes incredible. Uh-oh. A little, uh, oh, try yeah. trying to get the uh, connection back and stable. That looks like it's good there. Yeah, looking like we're going to play it out. See the 2P. Immediately afterwards. Yeah, bro, my, yesterday I hit I hit someone 600 milliseconds. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> nah, there, I, I think one time I got I got pretty close to, to those four digits. I was like, like wow, <laughs> this is a. Uh, all right, all right, ISPs. I know California has some bad ones, but uh, maybe we can lock in a little bit here. Oh, let's see if Cheerio can lock in. We have a hundred meter. Goes to the YRC to shut down the cube. Still. It's so scary because look, Drew's just sitting there with that teleport available. If Cheerio is able to close the gap, we can just teleport to the other side and get away. Oh, come down. oh that 6H is going to be a huge hit, but no real conversion opportunity. This RC is going to be more than enough to convert though. Not going to spend the burst. Just yeah. wants to go on through and start through the next three. That's a tough decision too to make there because you did have over 50 meter, right? That was definitely a round you could have made the comeback from, but I'll see to play the long game and I respect that. Oh yeah, if like really you lose your white wild assault, you might not get that back going in to round number three. Like I definitely respect the birth decision there from Cheerio. Look, I know people don't like white wild assault, but I think this matchup in particular is is a good argument for it. Yeah, it's like you see the matchup like this, you see like old chaos, and then you're like, you know what, May maybe you can at least keep it for these matchups. Like just reverts back whenever you pick a certain character. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. oh no, you're dead. Oh my God, Druid is more than dead. What a pickup by Cheerio and what a way to steal that round from the ashes of defeat. That man more like what man? Oh my God, I, as I, just, I didn't even know that had the potential to kill me. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, the moment that the mana was gone, that was it. No mana, no aura, you're out of here. Man, it's like I if I do remember correctly, the health is in the vicinity of chip once that uh once the mana goes all it's the way down. I think it's less. Chip. I was gonna say yeah. it's like I think it's less, but it's like I don't want the I don't want the uh, Yeah no the maze of the character to come out. You're correct, he becomes the squishiest character in the game once he runs out of mana. Outstanding, outstanding. I mean Cherry able to capitalize on that, take the first game, but the pressure from Drew is, is showing that they might want to go ahead and take a game of their own. I agree with that, honestly. Just instead of going for the wall break. Oh no, you get back thrown instead. Alright, you know, might not love, but Cheerio is showing off the pressure, and we're seeing even better challenges from Jui. Immediate burst there from Drew. Just trying to play that zoning game and it's working out beautifully. But look at the mana. We're playing on a thin razor's edge. Oh, goodness. We can play on a razor, razor thin edge. Remember that that ship damage is also going to deplete the amount of mana that Asuka has. It's so scary to block gold losers, this character. That's it. Out of mana and out of meter. You can't block anything. Oh no. And isn't able to last out the minigun. Cheerio is going to take yet another round. Oh my god, the counter hit right off the bat. Cheerio looking not just to take a round, but another game here. Oh no. PRC4. Keep it moving. Tries to get something. And it's just not going to be enough. The pressure from Gold Lewis is too smothered. There we 
we go. Wild Assault uh -oh. immediately. The Great Equalizer closing the gap. It has really been just a saving grace for Cheerio in this matchup. Yep, able to rotate between the drone, the minigun, and white Wild Assault has given Cheerio the options that they need to just go ahead and try to, you know, close out a matchup where it's pretty hard to zone out. Oh, but there it is. Big stage. The rules. Able to catch. Sending out more of the cube. Even more cubes, but even less mana. Only enough for the teleport. And the teleport can't save you from what is looking like certain doom. What is the scaling on that minigun? He had plenty of shots left in the chamber. Yeah, and that was incredible there to go for the Skyfish in that scenario. You saw that we somehow had to combat the fact that we were not going to be able to get rid of the mana, right? We had the mana regen card. I think that's like the first time we got it in this entire set, which is arguably the best card for that man. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, I tell you, something about that, uh, Something about that Skyfish scaling just never ceases to amaze me. I mean, we've been seeing the corner us that the Gold Lewis players are using now that are incorporated. And, you know, it's, been, it's just they find ways to get even more damage. I don't know how they do it. The right back to square one. Oh, good block on the tap by Cheerio. Isn't able to block it the second time though. And now it's gonna result in a good chunk of health gone and a positive bonus here for Grease. Rushing on in, goes for the 2S. I like the deflect shield option there. Uh-oh, oh, Black Hole. Oh, really good block on the overhead. BRC, BRC back, and then a BRC back again to punish, and the capitalization from Juice is gonna net them around. It really does feel like if Black Hole's out on the screen and we are just sending out the wall of cubes, that it's kind of checkmate. GG's easy. Let's move to the next round. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, even, it's like, even then, you at least get a breather. You're like, you know what? I don't have to constantly worry about this. I can just run the cycle and just try and put out a nice little, nice little spew of hitboxes yeah. there. Absolutely. And now we're being a lot more mobile with our movement, right? We're not just sitting back and throwing out cubes and staying stationary. We're being very active, making sure that Cheerio doesn't feel comfortable going for that white wall assault. There's the DP with the Icicle, Shades of Dizzy. Yeah, but like you said, you just gotta... The thing about playing against Golu, you gotta beat the white wall assault out of him. And Drury's did an incredible job that last round, but Cheerio still has one more opportunity to try to make it happen. And the 5D, it's locked this time. And a oh. beautiful backdash. Say goodbye to your mana and possibly your entire life bar. But we drop it. Yeah, it's like the gravity just became too much there for Cheerio to try and convert all of them. And now Drees is going to get yet another chance. Pass the block. Does the YRC. And now Cheerio has one more chance to try and close out this round. Before it's time for the Drury show. Because look at the mana they have on deck. But the Wild Assault is going to allow Cheerio to get right back in there. Oh, look at this. Still not out of the woods yet. What an incredible pickup. Dashes in deep, oh, but there's some road tech. That was incredibly deep. And the white wild assault to tie up the round count and send Shiro to a set point. This feels like a top eight match, all right? Not a top eight winner's side match. <laughs> this isn't even a top eight qualifier. Oh man, White Wild Assault last week is just such an incredible tool in the neutral game. Allows what feels like Gold Lewis to, you know, play out this matchup and win even harder. Yeah, there's the throw. OCG going for the mixed scenario and the pressure. You can't press out of that when the cubes are here. Oh no. Look at all the cubes. We have the quick draw out. We have the mana reset. And now Sherry has to find a way to navigate through the minefield. There it is. Burn it down. Coming out once again. Acting as a bit of a combo breaker. But didn't oh, have wow. anything to save them there. Drews getting a point finally on the board. I like them being a lot more mobile, right? Harder to catch instead of just stationary sending out those cubes. Yeah, it's like, I mean, we saw that we saw a bit of turret drew, so it, it, what it felt like, you know, just sitting there in the same spot, allowing Cheerio to get some time to think about how they want to go in. But now, as you said, a bit harder to catch using the cubes to aid the movement, to set up hitboxes, allow Drews to make up space and not get punished for it. And that is what actually allowed them to take this next video. Wow, the throw. Catching whatever Drews wanted to do. 
Oh no, why Lava Salt coming out once again. Drees is in the corner, and you got a block. You have no meter, and you have definitely not the right cards for the job. Two teleports and two lightnings. How is they gonna find their way out of this one? Oh, it's 2P. The classic reversal, the no reversal reversal. Gets the what? whip into 2P. That was an incredible whip punish on that 6 8 4 behemoth. Allowed Drews to start something of their own. And yet another punish here for Drews. Yeah, and we mentioned it earlier, right? Getting Gold Lewis to whiff is a huge part of this matchup because then you can get those easy punishes like we just saw there. But still, you are stuck in the lion's den. And there oh, it is. No. It's flipped. Set point for Cheerio. Cheerio hasn't in the set point situation before. But the last time, Drews was actually the one who was able to clutch it out and keep this set alive. Are they gonna do it again? Or is Cherio gonna move on in top 48 winner side? See, Drew is really that man. We have the positioning, we have the pressure, we have the resources. It's all about executing it. Oh, it's like, all right, the cards are looking a little sketchy. You gotta get those switched out. Get the teleport. The staffs are gone, and now the pressure can begin. But do you believe in the heart of the cards? Two teleports available. There's plenty of cards to work with. It's just gonna be a matter of if Drew can find the way out. Gets cops trying to burst by the drone. White Wild is always gonna take him through. And now it's looking like one more touch for Cheerio to take this. And that is where it starts. And with the BT is where it ends. Cheerio is gonna be moving on in a winner's top 48. This deep in the bracket, this is what I wanna see. Oh, yeah, it's time man. for some jealous rage, Avian. Yes, sir. I know. I'm excited. I know that Keishu is definitely a DLC merchant, but this man makes the characters that he's playing look top tier no matter who he's on. Got her in the apple bottom jeans as well. All right, look at this. Jealous Rage, that's when this character becomes an absolute monster on offense. Has a lot of great tools as well, like that super to immediately put you back into Jealous Rage and build up the meter. Oh man, it's like that Jealous Rage is something to be reckoned with. With the over, I didn't quite believe though. And the Wild Assault is gonna give Abba another chance to try to get things started. Oh man, it's like we're going back in the mode though. Yep, immediately. That's what you'll see a lot of Abba players do. They try to end their combos either with Super to gain back more Jealousy Meter and go back in to Jealousy Rage, or they end it with RC uninstall in the key hit grab. Oh, and there's man. the overhead just catching Red Eye. I'm not off guard, this overwhelming offense. Uh, and like that option is so potent. Like I said, we were talking about it earlier on. Abba is such a controversial character because people are saying that in matchups, where she needs to zone, she's gonna get zoned. She is not quite the strongest, but when you see that both characters need to get in, Abba is showing her place here in the metagame. What, dashes underneath the drone, and it's looking like Keishu has already got a sense of that new DLC master. Yeah, honestly, it feels like just based on the things that Abba can do, that she is a really good foil to Gold Lewis, really good at countering Gold Lewis, right? Obviously, yeah. Gold Lewis is a little bit on the slower side too, which means she's not too scared when she's in her normal mode. Not gonna be zoned out too hard, but once she gets in the Jealous Rage, man, Gold Lewis just does not have the defense to keep up. Red Eye, I'm not getting overwhelmed here. Oh my goodness, it feels like we barely even had anything to talk about from Red Eye on that side. I mean, it just feels like we've just saw a steamroll from ABBA, and honestly, the way that the meta is shaping up, it's looking like ABBA is gonna be one of those off meta picks that gets the job done. We're seeing a lot of characters that like to go in in the meta game. We have, as we see here with the gold lose, we see the soul, we see the sin, a lot of these characters who wanna be in your face. And when ABBA's in that jealousy rage, you know, it's like she's probably the best character in the game when she's at that range. Yeah, I completely agree with you. She is just absolutely devastating when it comes to the offense. Yeah, we can never count out that Gold Lewis offense. Has to try and find a way in with an go, angry another town. Abba. Another town, another birthday train here. Red, I am not. But Mama Mia, look at the damage coming through. Keishu with the super again and the amount of jealousy rage at that build. Man, Keishu's mastery of the jealousy meter has been something to behold. It feels like once he gets in, 
He's never out. And it is looking like it is just too much for Red. I am not right now. Yeah, so having access to, you know, it's, it, you can see that she can kind of just ignore Drone. And that's a yeah. big factor of this matchup, right? Is not being able to set out Drone to control that neutral. You have to get your offense started before she can get the gears going. And now, Red I am not starting to get some pressure off. I like the deflect shield there, stuck up against the wall. I do that into the key. And now it's looking like Red is gonna get a chance to go on offense. It's a, with the 5k, a deceptively good normal. And we are getting a lot of mileage from Keishu out of that wild assault into the activation. God, and another super activating again into the install. The pressure queen, young and sweet with a golden key here. And that's going to be game number two. What in the world is going on here? I'm trying, I'm trying to find things to say about both sides, but... It's just looking like a steamroll over here from the Ava. Like we said, in matches where both of them need to go in, when Ava's in that jealousy rage, I don't know who can stop her. Yeah, so Juna said it best. All right, I'll give Juna the credit, is that people say, oh, Ava sucks when she's not in her Morha mode or not in her <laughs> jealousy rage mode, right? That's the thing. If you're playing Ava properly at high level, you're always in jealousy mode. <laughs> yep. Yep, it's like, I, I still remember when, you know, the plus R meta was still developing, everyone was writing off ABBA, then, you know, shout out Skeletal Minion, came through and made her look like the best character in the game. I just know we're going to find that ABBA champion soon enough in this game as well. And look at that, going for the Wild Assault there and off the stagger of the Wild Assault, using that time to immediately go into your install. Oh my, the Don's Eye is going to eat. Yeah all of that drone and Don's allow Keishu to continue that, their offense. Nanzai ignores everything. It even goes through supers. It's such an overtuned move, but that's why you play this character. Uh, like, like we said there, BRC into activation. And now Keishu is going to get yet another chance already on the set point here with the ABBA. Her, her speed is nearly like chip level when she's in install, but with soul level damage. You know what oh. I'm saying? <laughs> oh my goodness. After getting those two hits of Rekka 2, it's already at full Good. jealousy now. Oh, wow. Red Eye Not is going to have to weather the storm. We still have burst available. But this matchup just looks so difficult for Gold Lewis, right? Gold Lewis way too slow to keep oh, up no. with Ava when she is in jealous rage. Oh my goodness, had to keep up with one more set of mix-ups, but it's not going to be enough. And Keishu is just... love to see some more of this That Man, this Asuka gameplay with TNS's own MFCR up against Dami World here. All right, it's like looking like we've got Dami World on that Asuka, as you said. And the MFCR coming out here, repping TNS on the tried, go true, Leo White thing. And you see, we're trying to send out our own fireball to blow up the cues, but there's just too much geometry on the screen to handle. Oh my goodness, let's see if MFCR passed. I know he did, but he's got to prove it here in this set. Here we go, draw some cards. Activate my instant source breed. There's the 2D. Teleporting back to create some space. Oh, and the dash up 2D. Speaking of great 2Ds, Leo's is probably one of the best in the game. Allows him to get this mix of pressure. And one more mix up is gonna kill. And it damn sure does. First blood going to MFCR. Yeah, we was looking like a dominating round there for Dami, right? But yeah. all MFCR needed was that one missile drop kick to immediately explode the knees and start running that offense. Yeah, it's like that 2D opens up a world of wonders for Leo. Just like this super does with the hard knockdown. I gotta say, Leo with the wild assault definitely has one of the better applications. That man is cooking with it. Absolutely cooking. There's the 5D. Fast RC goes with the delay to try and bait out the burst, but smart burst there from Dami World, able to survive, getting another opportunity. It's what right I would say. There. Yeah, but I was gonna say, I was like, maybe getting another opportunity. If MFCR was able to just shut that down so soundedly, able to take game number one here in this top eight qual yeah but you know still getting another opportunity in another game here that was only game number one you still have to get three to win yeah it's like that that's the name of the game baby we are in first to three territory you have a lot of time to adapt and let's see if these players are gonna be able to take advantage of it and keep this set nice and close one. Let's rock. Just lost him back 
Honestly, the walk back and walk forward from Leo are just so menacing, but so is that back grab on Asuka. Oh, but here's the DP. The almighty flash kick from Leo. Oh, no. Oh, gets hit with the 6H. This yeah, starter is going to put it to work. The hard knockdown. Oh, we're switching test case as well. I love it. Switch test case, immediately go into your deck to draw the cards that you want. Yeah, I remember when that tech was first coming out, and people said that this was going to change Asuka for the better. Able to see it here from Dami World, and able to put it to use as they smother MFCR in this round. Uh oh, all right, the close slash starter from Leo. So scary. Good mash on the 214 A though. Absolutely. Uh -oh, two screamers on deck. Also has the quick replacement card, but it's just gonna get deep beat out of that wild assault, and MFCR is gonna catch Domi at a time when they have no cards to work with. Oh, but here's a nice pickup. Yeah, no cards, no options here. And of course, oh, not an opportunity to even spend burst if you wanted to. Though we are definitely gonna hold on to that with only only top decking like that. Yeah, nah. Yeah, it's like it's so it's so hard to just keep track of when. It's like, you know, you have no cards to work with. You're like, all right, I got to find a time to draw against a character like Leo, where I know they're going to be able to get in. And now they're going to have to find it once again. This could be a huge chance for Dami. Plenty of leader to work with. Going to go with the Mulligan Super and try to get something started here on O. Yeah, and having the wall of cubes there. That's such a good option to get some pressure going, and we still have plenty to throw out. Oh, man. He draws another one. Oh, wow. Well, puts away the staff, though. Not gonna be able to get that speed stuff out. Has a teleport to work with. Has an angry MFCR tailing them. And MFCR is just gonna do what they do best. Put you in the vortex and kill you with the pinwheel. Game number two is gonna go to MFCR. Yeah, looking incredibly clean here. Dami World able to keep up, but just again, piloting Asuka takes so much brain power, bro. You gotta be Jimmy Neutron to do this stuff. And <laughs> Again, I saw people in chat mentioning how, you know, Seijian was saying trying to commentate the mirror made his head hurt. I believe that this character is so not only difficult to watch and figure out what's going on, but difficult to pilot in itself. Oh, yeah. So being able to be consistent with him takes a really, really strong player. And Dami is being consistent, just unable to close out these rounds. Man, the matchup, the matchup of the mirror would definitely make my head hurt too. Especially as a player, do you realize how many resources you have to be watching? Like, that's got to be insane. Yeah, it... <laughs> the Honestly, uh, just just a little bit of uh, uh, extra extra fun facts here. I talked to Peppery Splash. Peppery Splash told me that this character is one of the hardest characters he's ever had to learn in a fighting game. And that's, that's Peppery Splash, right? He's played all Guilty Gear games. Yeah, so that's the man who's the king of gear, and he says, you know what, Asuka is definitely the hardest. Like, that's an opinion that I know that I would trust. Yeah, there's just so much to keep track of. Oh my god, it works! Speaking my of god, track does of it work? Oh my god, look, more geometry out on the screen. Bottom Had a big old cube coming for him afterwards. I mean, listen, that's the Asuka dream right there. I know Dami's gonna go to sleep thinking about that round. Simple geometry, but here we go. Closing the gap with the 5k. Catches you with the overhead. All right, it goes with the red once again. And we are seeing MFCR at set point here. Despite the valiant effort from Dami, has to try to close at least one out here to keep themselves in contention for winner side top eight. Oh, what a trade! Immediately just goes right back in with the 5k. Unstanced into the 2k. Last time we saw the overhead there, so mixing things up. Oh, the command grab! Put him in the dirt. Liam's been watching. Oh no, he's been watching a bit too much WrestleMania. Taking a bit of inspiration there. And now has one more chance to close it out. The RC is going to do it. And the sweep from MCR is going to push him into winner's side top eight. I just want you to go through the wall. I don't want a combo, all right? Just give me the wall break. <laughs> oh, man. I remember seeing the tweet. It's like, if I hit counter hit pile bunker, I should just win the game. Like, no second round, no I agree. anything. I agree. It's just like, an kill. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I will say, though, when Bridget came out, I was just happy to see that I got I got throw yo's again, man. Like, listen. Yo, Marbello starting things off, getting the knockdown early on. Uh, this matchup, I don't know how this actually plays out in the current meta, but I feel like this would be a matchup that's played out 
very often between these two, as the South is known for both their gold moves and chip play. And there's the RC immediately into the overhead. Again, we mentioned this a little bit earlier when we saw the matchup against Milia. This is the fly versus the fly slaughter here. But I think that Gold Lewis has a bit more versatility in this matchup, right? Chip is obviously a bit more straightforward, especially Marvello's chip. He likes to go for that more with punish play style. Yeah, it's like, it's like Marvello definitely likes to try and sit there and throw out normals that he knows are gonna with punish. It's like, but that style does definitely get neutralized by some of, the, like we said, the Gulu's options that have a very tough time actually whipping in the first place. Oh, that was a nice little conversion there, dropping Cheerio into the corner. Look at all this meter we got. Spends the PRC just to stay close. That was for the throw. Here we go. We all know the situation. What's coming up after Ooh. that Gamma Blade? That's going to be a drop combo here from Marvello. No, that's all right. It was American Reset. Yeah, We're bringing it back. Going. Marvello, Florida's champion. Is gonna get the kill with the Alpha Blade. You know, it's like as much as I hate it, damn, that move is cool. Still first available here for Cheerio going to the next round. Whoa! Fuck for that two piece! The reverse hitbox. We are not playing Smash Bros. We are seeing this here <laughs> in good old Guilty Gear Strive. Oh, and the punish on the Alpha Blade. Oh, punish no. on the first. That's the OTG is gonna do more than kill and a perfect for Cheerio. After that very uncharacteristic 2P conversion. But you know what? If anyone's got those, I know that Chili has got those for sure. Boy, bro. Whoop that trick. Wow. That was insane. The behind the back 2P. Absolutely mental. Oh, man. It's like, no. I, honestly, I was going to say Marvello needs answers, but what's the answer for that? Like, if you think that you are going to go over their anti air, get hit reverse, and then get comboed into another zero to my gold Lewis, like, I don't know what you're supposed to be adjusting. Gets the grab once again. Here we go. Gamma Blade into what goes for the Rekka instead. This pressure is going to continue for Marmelo. Get the third one. Are we going to see a fourth? Are we going to see Strike? Like oh, strike he goes to the JP. Puts us back to neutral. Oh, no. The DRC by Shiryu gets off and started. But Marvello is going to take offense of his own and kill this Cheerio, and kill this Cheerio Gold Lewis. Oh, you see, oh, trying to go for the whip wow. punish there, right? Saw the 2k whip dash, did, but Shiro recognizing that, going for the jump. There's the beta blade. Yep, we are seeing the mind games of two seasoned training partners here. Goes for, tries to bait out the whip punish. As we see there once again, and now Shiro's able to get his offense started. A little bit of shimmy pressure there, but the burst immediately from Shiro. Doesn't want to hold on to it, but gonna build up that meter while dashing forward. Uh oh. I tried to bail out the burst. Nope, just gonna let it rock. I honestly agree. Oh, it's like, but. Ooh. Up an anti air 5B. Nice pick up right into the Uzumaki barrage. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, that pick up there from Marvella was incredibly nice. But the main problem with this matchup is on chip, you just give Gold Lewis so much meter to work with. Air throw isn't gonna get punished because the 2P lands just in time. PRC, there's a pick up into the wall break, and there is a game for Marvello tying things up 1 1. Oh man, it's like we have got ourselves a set, ladies and gentlemen. We are out here, we are seeing the adjustments from Marvello come out in real time, and we have got ourselves not another sweep, but an absolute slobber knocker to try and qualify for the winner's side of top eight. Yeah, and it's the last winner side spot as well. Yeah, like you we don't want to get sent down to the shark infested waters that is the loser side of the bracket. We got people fighting down on the loser side right now, but we got to keep our eyes on the prize. We got the winner side qualifier right here, and Marvello off to a red hot start. And wow. the wall there with the wild assault. Oh wow, successfully getting that whip punish there. A hundred bar for Chip to work with in a dream. Oh wow, that 2D would have been massive damage for Marvello. But has to try to find their way back in. And it's going to be even harder with the Cheerio throw chain. 
Yeah, no meter here from Arbella. Does have burst available, but isn't going to get the opportunity to spend it. What is this kill? Nah, that is nah. I was like, wait a minute. Let's not get ambitious here. If we fully charged it, it probably would have. I think I think so too. Those three drones would have came through, and it would have actually killed. Going yeah. for the throw there is so interesting, Cheerio. Oh no! And oh, that was a, that was in a situation where we probably could have kept the pressure up with the Behemoth Typhoons to try and get some chip damage in. There's what a throw! throw. On the oh man, Marvello is cooking now. He has had his time to look over the game plan that Cheerio wants to run and is now dismantling it piece by piece as he catches the back guy, goes into the barrage, and takes him through the wall. All right, yep, yeah, a little bit of stagger pressure. Trying to get Cheerio to flinch, and there it is. All right. Oh, man, no beat there. And now it's looking like Marvello. Gets the J2K and the Alpha Blade on the other side is gonna be enough to frazzle Cheerio and take his second game of the set so far. Yeah, Alpha Blade at its scariest when you're at low health. You really have to be on point. And in the mental stack that you have, thinking about all the different options that Chip has, Alpha Blade feels almost unblockable in some of those scenarios. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you might be walking forward. You might be, it's like, you know, you might be trying to dash block. Hang on a bit too long in that four position and getting caught. Marvello is showing off that even though it's like, you know, the first game wasn't something that be desired. That's why you use up all three of those games on your own end. Here we go. DP on out. There's the beta. Right to the throw. Pressure out here from Marvello once again. Gets answered by the 2P. And as we've seen before, this is all Gold Lewis needs to get started. Oh, trying to go for the 2K for the wire speed. The moment that we press the button, that was really smart timing from Marvello, but unfortunately just runs right into a big metal coffin. And that coffin is the stuff of nightmares, especially if you have as low effective health as Chibzana. You have to get so many more touches. But if Marvello is able to do it, just know that the victory is going to be even more sweet at the end. Well, now we get the safe jump here off of the hard knockdown. But instead, we just go for the Gamma. Yeah, it's like, that could have been some scary stuff if Cheerio decided oh to react to that. We're down with the system, but it's like the offense here from Cheerio. He's going to put Marvello in an already scary situation. Bro, oh, oh my god, you're dead. Oh my god, so dead. Man. <laughs> you know, you would think after all this time, I wouldn't be surprised anymore, but I'm still just, wow. It takes takes the, takes the my breath away when I see some of this damage. How does he do it? How does, how does Gold Lewis just sit here and find even more ways to just do 50% of my health bar both on block and on hit? I mean, look, he's one hell of a hoss, all right? Duel one. Getting big started here, but a good dash block from Narvello allows him to get things started and push Cheerio all the way to the corner. I honestly thought that, I honestly thought that Marvello's gonna land on that drone there, but uh, you know, proving me wrong, getting the offense started here. Oh, we're gonna kill for sure. Yep, not yep. even a question. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Set point now for Cheerio. Let's see if Marvello can dig deep and bring this back. We've been doing all right, but we can't let the damage get the best of us. Yep, Marvello has been taking one round at a time, but Cheerio now only needs one round. And this will be his last chance if Marvello isn't able to find something here. We can't catch Cheerio out, though. We might not be going to final game, final round. Oh, gets the command grab and has it a meter to convert. Oh, we are. are oh, yeah, we're going to final game. Final round here to qualify for top eight winner side. And we try to go up with the JD there at round start. Solid safe option for Gold Lewis. Oh, man. Oh, catches, catches that back dash with the white wild assault. And oh, the Alpha Blade from way up in the corner to get over the drone. I don't even think Cheerio was expecting that to hit. 
Oh, definitely not. Tyrio was not expecting to find themselves in the corner, able to stifle the momentum with the 5k. And now, Arbello to get something started, punishes the BT, and this is going to be a big pickup. Yeah, big positive bonus as well. That's the most important part here, along with the knockdown. Cheerio is nearly at 100 meter. We need our own meter to combat this. I have to figure out how they're going to navigate around this drone. Oh, no! Tries to go up and tries to air throw. Now, one more chance. Cheerio trying to find his way out. Does with the burst. And now, one more chance on either player's side. Yeah, but now you have to guess. 50-50 is able to block the low. Back, back to neutral, Marbello creating some space, oh. there's the 5P, gets the pickup, and that's gonna be it! That is it indeed! And Marvello is gonna close out a nail-biter of a Game 5 to advance to Top 8! Mid versus Riley. We are gonna cook right now. Now, I will say that the Gold Lewis players are not too fond of this matchup. But regardless, Sid is gonna have to try to make something work if they want to qualify, when they want to qualify for top eight, leagues. and you see why they're not too fond of this matchup oh, yeah. right now. Oh yeah, like, no, this is just like this is where it begins here. But the moment that Gold Lose is able to get something started, it's looking like we are sitting here and back on even footing. We'll have to see still having to block all this pressure. White Wall Assault though, a reverse Uno card coming through. I remember it. something to consider about this match. This isn't to qualify for top eight losers exclusively, but for a chance to fight Luke in order to get in on that top eight loser side. Yeah, so Sid is able to overcome this. Going against Luke is going to be really, really difficult as well on top of it. But Riley right now going absolutely wild here. I like it. You see the RC from your opponent. Just jump out of the way. Don't deal with any of it. But speaking of jump out of the way, Riley is just going to go ahead and jump in the way with that scooter into the kick. And now, going to get offense started here. Sid finding a way to jump right into hell. And Riley's finding a way to actually jump right into that 2D there. Oh no. Going for a starship there with no DP to back you up. Cracker 21 oh, 22 no. coming through with the 100. One. Dollars, oh, no. triple digits into the match, Arena. Thank you so much. That round is for you. Cracker coming in with a banger. But over the one dollar donation and coffee coming through with the one dollar as well. These players are fighting for a crazy pot right now. One dollar or a hundred dollars, it all makes a difference. Thank you so much. Yep. Here we go. And now Sid is gonna try to find their way with these yo-yos. Holy orders in the background. I know that these two players are feeling the magic that's coming through with it right now. And look at this pressure. You can't block anything. Tried to pull out the sky fish, but got blown up by the 5H. Oh no, and then this is exactly where Riley wants to be. And this is exactly where Riley doesn't want to be. Oh yeah, give me your meter or your life. Oh wow, is able to beat the victor in the air and face out the 6P. We have one more chance to try to close it out here no for shot. Riley. Sid. Doesn't block Sid. the fuzzy. Sid. Sid, you got a block, man. The Roger Roller coming through. Not going to be enough to kill, but that's a hard knockdown and a free setup. One more. And catches with the... Oh, no. Oh, Sid God. had one more chance. It will dodge the killing machine. But the oh. And the tap dust is gonna complete the comeback. I know it was Holy Orders, but we could have had Guile's theme in the background. It had the same exact effect. What a round there by Riley, and what a way to close what out that game. And Bandicoot's coming through with the seven months. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Hope you all are enjoying what you're seeing. If your friends are not watching this, let them know that TNS is live with Guilty Gear Strive. Monday Night Strive, Strive is War. Yes, sir. Like, we have been having some insane matches already. I feel like the weird thing about that stream, that one match, that one round, quantifies it totally. We have not seen anything that has been too close. We haven't seen anything that has been too, that has been too much of a stop. It's good matches all around today. Okay, here we go, able to get the toss. This match can get even better if Sid can tie things up. Wow. Oh, wow. Trying to press the killing machine. Frame trapping there with the killing machine. But they're going to go with the 6P. Now, you can tell that the way that Sid is structuring his pressure, he's so scared of that DP. And that's exactly why Bridget 
DP makes it so easy to DP RC on Gold Bliss. And Gold is a big body. No Man Stero coming through with $15 into the match arena. Appreciate the support. Thank you. All right, good block on the high. Five Riley, Sin Victor has a mountain to climb. And that mountain is going to fight right back with a 2 3 6 S. Round starts. Speaking of S, there's the 2S coming through from Riley. Getting that early pressure once again. Oh, trying to get the conversion there. But we'll take a hard knockdown instead. Keeps on baiting out those six Ps. And what a conversion Ooh. from Riley to convert right on into the Super Roll Ring. Get the hard knockdown and tack on some damage on top of it. Look at the spacing, staying at that 5H range. Riley knows exactly how to play this matchup. So well first in this matchup. Sid is trying to find answers right now. And this could be what they need. But the wires see from Riley. Yeah, just to avoid the mix-up altogether. But there we go. White Wild Assault. Oh no. Fuzzy jumps out. So realizing that that's not quite meaty. Oh, this is so dead. And Sid Victor showing a little bit of life, able to tie up the round count in this game. Round start, both of them creating some space. Of course, Riley is going to want to keep that space up, try to score those straight hits with things like the 5H and the 2S, send out the yo-yo comfortably, and then start running exactly what you are seeing on your screen right now. Uh-oh, we have a it's like we haven't seen that throw come out just yet. Throwing in a bit more layers. Catches oh. Sid Victor trying to backdash. And with more wall health, that would have been curtains. Ooh, but we go for the wake up 16. Got a little too greedy after that safe jump. But I love the way that Riley is utilizing YRC. Utilizing oh, YRC as a baby. Oh no, I do have to agree though the way. That rally has been using YRC has been incredible. It feels like you already have so many defensive options on Bridget. And the ones that cover that DP are going to get snuffed out by that YRC. And then you have a Bridget in front of you that's plus 10 and ready to mix your stuff in. Exactly. It, 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 it's used every time to just negate a mix-up. That is what the YRC is being used for, right? We're not just using it because we're scared of the pressure. We're using it in a smart way to make sure that I don't have to deal with this mix-up at all. Give me some space. Let me take control. Take my turn back. Exactly. I mean, one of the things about that about Gold Lewis pressure is, as scary as it is, the startup of most of the moves is incredibly long and does make you much more susceptible than YRC. Getting things started off hot on Riley's end so far. Good block of the tap dust by Sid, but he is still in the mix. Look at that Riley creating the space, just having that yo-yo locked on you. Beautiful backdash gets the 2K. Now we're out. Let's make some magic. We gotta try and make sure that these options are getting caught here. Catches Riley trying to jump, and we all know how this goes. This is gonna be huge damage for Sid. Ooh, I like that. Going for dash cancel into the drone just for the reset, not the wall break. We want to make sure we don't go back to neutral against Bridget. Keep her caged. Yeah, but you absolutely have to in this matchup. Oh no, knows that when you try and what Wild Assault on round start, the meter gets eaten if Bridget tries to go ahead and 5P on the round start. Uh -oh. oh, look at the defense here from Sid. Sid down, holding down back on everything. But will it be enough or will Riley have the mix ups to close out this round against Sid? We don't know if this is gonna kill, but with the yo yo, that might be enough. No. And it doesn't proc! Oh no! Little BP here, there's the wires he did. With the last pick to left, and we make our own comeback. But Riley's sitting on a hundred meter, you gotta oh, be careful. Face no. up the YRC! He knows that the YRC was coming. That is definitely of a, that is definitely of no secret. And it goes back on the same side. Sid expecting a mix-up and getting sent to match point for Riley for their troubles. I got with the loop de loop. <laughs> it looked like he knocked me. <laughs> oh, man. 2D trying to reach out far. I like it back up, set up the drone. Gets the 6P. Very nice work. Oh, that's super plus. 
as is most of the ZZs that Gold Moose is gonna throw out. And Riley is to find their way out. How many hits have they taken? Brother. It's looking like they only need two. Perfect. Oh my goodness. And Sid is gonna find themselves on the board here, not getting swept and showing that still they still got some fire behind those eyes. Now it looked like they were doing the sweeping there right at the end. Clean and house with that perfect. Oh, yeah. But still, it is a tall mountain to climb, right? That is one out of three, and you cannot afford to slip up now. You are on your last life in this tournament. Yeah, it's like you have to remember that we were streaming winter side matches all day. Okay, you lose. You know what? You can go ahead, get things cooking on the winner, on the loser side. But now that we're there, we have a lot more stakes on the line here. Goes high, and that's gonna be enough to crack that dope of Sid Victor. Gonna go through the wall with the hard knockdown. Plenty of meter here for Riley catching the back dash. Oh man, this is such a scary spot for Sid. Oh, you notice that we constantly reset over and over there to make sure we were getting as many hits as we possibly could before the wall spot happened. Oh, yeah, it's like, I mean. That's what you gotta do is you don't wanna give Gold Lewis all that burst meter because there's so many applications that he has for it, right? Like so, in order to mitigate that, Riley is just playing out her offense to perfection right now. And then now she is sitting at set point, almost has full burst available as well, but decides to spend it for the wild assault setup. Yeah, we're an offensive and defensive masterclass here from Riley. Ooh, and we have seeing some life from Sid Victor. That was a little bit of a panic burst there from Sid, right? Bursting on a 2K2D. All that was going to do was get you knocked down right there. There's no corner carry or damage. Uh, okay, honestly, I cannot oh. agree more, but this starter huge. is huge. Yeah, do the super wooden pill, so instead just went for the wild assault, score the knockdown, keep the meter available for this incoming mix up. Tried to go low, but there's the YRC. Oh, I think they tried to bait up the YRC there, but it's going to get a hit. And Gold Lewis is no stranger to these plus frames. Oh, the killing machine forcing the block and backdash gets caught. Riley oh, takes the 3-1. No. Press S and you're out of that situation in a heartbeat. Yeah, but let's see. We don't have to speculate anymore. We're about to find out right now here in our first match of top eight winners at TNS. Bro, this Abba color, but I'm telling y'all, the the jean color is the best. Yeah, color the 11. People, the people don't know about Jabba yet. They're gonna learn. Oh, it's Jabba. <laughs> Here we go. Activating. Activating the yeah. base cannon here. Good God. Maybe he wants to bait up those DJs from MFCR, but it's not gonna be enough. The kill has no boundaries, and it's gonna get back thrown by Keishu. Oh, but the backdash oh. goes slow. Gets caught by the Berserker Barrage, and that's going to be the first round. I was going to say, I was like, I was, is I going to catch the backdash? And it damn sure does. It's looking like we are going to get the first round come out here for MFCR. Yeah, and utilizing that 5H. Oh, my God. Whoa. Immediate activation into Danzai. <laughs> Danzai is so ridiculous. Whoa, that confirmed to keep MFCR in the corner. Was, was actually insanely cool, but... Yeah, because of the ground bounce effect of that. Oh yeah, I think I mean, all of Abba's combos just look like, it's like she looks like she's in creative mode, man. It's some crazy. We're oh, and the back dash in the five H. Gonna go ahead and get plenty of bar. Don's like his throne isn't quite able to make that meaty. Yeah, ran in just a little too deep on that. There's the PRC tries to go for the two P. Nice maneuvering here from MFCR to close the distance. Oh my goodness, both of these players are swinging. Now. Oh wow, the parry release. It's gonna catch, it's gonna catch Keishu. And had one more chance. Yeah. Is it able to capitalize on it? And MFCR is gonna take round number one. 2D is incredibly useful in this matchup. Just the, the range that it has, right? ABBA already has such difficulty closing the gap when she is not in her install. Yeah, I mean, I feel like MFCR was executing that game plan to perfection. Was able to keep, was able to keep Keishu out. The moment that Keishu got in, was able to rotate his options and just go ahead and kill any sort of momentum that Keishu was trying to build with the Jealousy Rage. Yeah, absolutely. Very well said. The momentum is the big part here for ABBA, a real snowball character.
So we, got two, we got two snowballs on the screen. Unstoppable force versus unstoppable force some of the time. Who is going to come out on top? Look at Paris Elsa. He's just vibing here. Yeah, he's, just hang, he's just hanging out. He's like, all right, like, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna hang out eventually, I, I hope. I hope we're going we're gonna to cook it at some point. All right, now, yeah, MSDR doing a good job. Just being wow. pretty cool and off. Awesome. There we go. Jealous Raid into Donzai. Oh, no. This is what the people are scared of. And the DP bait is going to be enough. To, it's like not going to be enough to kill. Not even close, but he's able to put Keishu back into Jelzy mode. Ooh, the wire speed there was very key from MSDR. And not to get flipped by a nasty mix, but instead he gets flipped by the key is king oh man the super is so sick we got the ex he's like i got the ex he coming out here help it out abba oh and there's the punish the 5k there yeah you don't go for a cancel honestly that's a reaction from mcr oh no it's be right onto the fireball pushing they shoot all the way into the corner Oh, oh man. man. Uh oh. Our internet is, uh, we, we right in. It's his fault. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? Is it? I'm like, you know what? Someone, someone's got that figured out. But it's looking like Keiji's gonna get things started once again. Let's take it to the other side. Alright, MFCR getting that pressure started. Oh man. The pressure with those Ks is just so, is just so tough. Yeah, Rad is out here. Trying to, try to peel for his boy, but it's not going to quite be enough. And now they're out. He's going to tie it. mentioned earlier, it's about that momentum, right? We yes. saw the momentum allowing Keishu to do some incredible things, but once he ran out of the Jealous Rage bar, and he couldn't get back in again, that momentum was stopped full. Oh, yeah. I, think, I mean, Keishu, I mean, I feel like he does so much better than the other Apple players out right now. And his management of the bar is so incredible. Like, look at how he is able, he has literally fire. A millisecond left, and now he has half of it and is able to go back and do the Morahan nonsense once again. Uh oh, but here we go. You're stuck into the blender now. Oh, that's cheap! That's oh, cheap! Oh, man, what? <laughs> Recovering and just seeing the run through. No, Reversible super put us back into the install. I like that. Not gonna quite be able to throw it, and now this is gonna be such a scary spot. Gets the throw. What is the gonna kill? Not quite, but the close slash afterwards is, and Keishu is gonna tie up those games one to one. Coming one. right into a round star, both of them creating space. It's just to see Keishu backing up at round star. I mean, maybe they figured that the key to this matchup is to sit in the back, get into install, and try to make something happen. No pun intended, right? <laughs> so there's the throw. Oh my god, backdash gets caught by the axe kick. Sending you straight through with the... Woo -hoo! Wow! Dan's Fan City, not gonna quite get the kill, but the 5D will do it. Yeah, the 5D will be more than enough. Gonna be a perfect for MFCR after the lobby looking like he is ready to go on a tear right now. Now, honestly, I'm actually pretty curious to see how the command that interacts with the fireball, but it's looking like we aren't even going to see that. We're just going to see absolute domination for Keishu. Oh, no. Just a little too deep in on that jump. Or too high on that jump, I should say, so got tossed. Yeah, slightly too minus. It is indeed still one to one here. What a pickup with the one. Oh, that conversion was crazy. Yeah, yep. there we go. Buffering in that super to find the gap. Leo has more than enough reversals to handle that jealousy rage pressure, but also we are seeing the command normals from, uh, not the command normals, but the K normals from ABBA putting in more than enough work. I can be able to save you though here in this round and the wild assault fully charged is going to be enough to get that kill there. MFCR going up 2-1. Yes, sir. 2-1. Going up for MFCR has one more win to try to make it on winners finals of this tournament right now. But we are looking down here at the loser side. 
once again in our little bit of downtime looks like riley was able to beat luke three to one and qualify for top eight of tns looking very strong man we have had some crazy matches i wish we could have seen a lot of these loser side ones but we don't have enough time for that we got to keep the bracket moving you know keishu looking to bring this back trying to get that money 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 oh, yeah, yeah. We wonder what the move is. Keishu is about to show us here. Getting excited with forcing out that burst from MFCR. Pop into Chelsea right away. This could be a big pickup here. It gets the overhead. overhead. You see that distance on that overhead? Oh my gosh, that, that joint traveled a third of the screen. But MFCR has shown that they have offense that they can run of their own. Now, the one thing to note is that Ava does not have reversals. Even though they do have a four frame, as you see there, that is also very potent. They might not even need it. Oh, you're dead. Right into Key is King. Oh my goodness. Showing their metal right as an axe there. The flash kicks from MCR might need to be tamed. Or honestly, it could be a mix up. Might want to go for them more now that Keishu is onto them. To the corner now. This back turn pressure is so scary. Oh, Abba doesn't have a whole lot of great answers, right? I see. I think Keishu is only going for a lot of 5-8. Oh, that is the wow. longest reaching button there for Abba in normal mode. Oh my goodness. It's like, and then look at it. Look at that jealousy rage bar now. It is three quarters of the way up and plenty of health to work with. We could very well see an Abba around here if Keishu gets one touch. Well, MXDR is starting to get a little used to the Jealousy Rage pressure, right? We're going into yeah. a lot of Donzai, RC into the overhead. So, MXDR has just started holding back stand blocking. Yeah, it's like, I mean, like you are saying, like, I feel like now we are seeing that, you know, we're seeing that MXDR is used to all the things that ABBA has to do. And now it's an on match point of the set. Yeah, I think we need to swip, switch things up a little bit. Maybe go for some more low options once we get that pressure going with the Donzai. Yeah, like, I don't really know what, it's like what the low options are supposed to be. Uh, especially on this character. Yeah, then we're going to jump in at him. Do a ton of damage, take him through the wall. And get even more of that rage bar back. It feels like Keishu has more than when they initially started Oh, but the yeah. back turn key, such a solid anti-air. There's the goal burst though, catches with the overhead into the super to prevent you from bursting. Yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna oh. not be enough. Not quite, MFCR has one more touch. We've seen what this man can do with a hundred bar and a dream. And it's gonna be the four frame match from Keishu to send us over to game five. No RC was crazy from MFCR. Normally goes for fast RC and to run through in those situations. I wonder if he just didn't think he could get punished in a big way that would kill him. Now, if you if we were to watch back those tapes, we would see that MFCR actually just activated the RC a oh. bit too late. And he is able, it's like, and then Keishu recognized the situation, was able to get that four frame match on the 2P and convert that eight RC. Yeah, it's like, sadly, tried to delay the RC and got punished for their crimes. Now, one game for glory. One game to move on to winner's finals. And here we go. Donza, I know we go for the overhead instead. Okay, we go for the counter. Something that we honestly have not seen all set. But he's gonna get caught. This is looking like dire straight now for Keishu. Oh no! Back back, he's gonna get caught. Oh, that's gonna be more than enough. Yep, with the two one four H, it's like looking like Keishu is gonna go through that wall, and MFCR is gonna take that one comfortably. Match point for the for the man. Mystic speed right off the bat as well. No fear against normal mode Abba at all. Oh no! That's so scary. And especially now that the throw is enacted. The only thing that Keishu has is the backdash 2H! Beautiful, but can we finally get started? Look at that jealousy bar. We have so much available. Don't let it go to waste, Keishu! Uh-oh. 
Like you said, has so much of that jelly bar. God and is able to get into the jealous rage with that super, but gets back thrown by MFCR. And that throw is gonna lead to Abba's demise. Much for the support. We cannot thank you enough. Yes, thank you for coming through, donating, I believe, 150 bucks of this week's match arena. That is in. Say it, look at that prize pot go and look at these players go as he said getting things started off here at breakneck speed oh and here we go et5 holy coming through with the sub as well the prime thank you so much for the support we got the nine moons mirror match i see chat calling it a conspiracy well you know maybe nine moons should just stop getting so many good players huh <laughs> yeah they talk about the team kill as they listen gotta count your blessings man both of your players are sitting in a winner's semis a guaranteed fifth place finish for both of these talents. Yeah. This is what we call suffering from success for Nine Moons, all right? <laughs> Here we go. JH, PRC, look at that deep run in off the BRC landing. Oh, yeah, but here we go. But then J2K from Marbello is going to be more than enough to clean it up with the conversion. First blood going to Marbello. Oh, both of them immediate trade there at round start with the far slash and the 5K. Conversion off of that 2 -P. Got to see a lot of rat work in Fly Quest Fight Series where he actually ended up winning that tournament. Will he cement himself as a legend and win TNS as well? Oh, but there we go. It's the back throw. Face down. Jumps to block the Alpha Blade. I like the idea. Lava does get clipped by the overhead on the Rekka series. Oh no, the car Rekka is so scary. Hard knockdown, one more situation. Tries to jump out and the Alpha Blade is gonna catch you. The first game is gonna go to Marvella. Yeah, looking to be the quicker draw here, the fastest speedster. Oh, it's like, oh man, it this is already getting things started. Like you said, the speed is already going crazy. These rounds are ending quickly and a rat needs to adjust just as fast, if not faster, if they wanna try and take this thing. Yeah, and remember, the key to fighting Melee is to keep her grounded. If you can keep Melee grounded, you can win the matchup. Marvello is a pretty grounded chip, all things considered, but he's doing a good job sticking to Rat like Blue, not allowing him to take to the skies. Oh, yeah, the, wow, the backwards DP is actually going to be advantageous, but so is that Cavill for Rat. Oh, that first match went so fast that Marvello got game one before predictions were over. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, that's just showing the testament to how quickly these players are able to make their decisions. How quickly these players are able to cook. It's looking like we got minute rights out here from both sides. Gamma play coming out. As you say, keeping Amelia grounded. Caught the fuzzy jump with the Gamma, but is finally able to find their way out as Marvello puts them right back in, it feels like. Yeah, and harassing with that 5k as well. And then, see, it feels like Marvello is just so willing to hit these DPs, knowing that there isn't much that Melee can do to punish, and knowing that the reward of a hit would be incredible. Hit for the 2p, trying to press out. Oh, there's Artemis, get a little bit of a stagger oh, too. Combo. Maybe recognizing the bad match from Marvello, but I don't know if that combo's on gold yet. Oh, BRC. We thought that Marvello was going to go for another backdash there, most likely. Oh, what if there catches Marvello sleeping at the wheel and catches him trying to press something? It might have been a failed DP. It might have been something. But all we know is that Rat is able to tie up this round count. Yeah, get some pickup as well after that J8. Just blocks there. Oh, he wow. Able to get the punish. Beautiful stuff. Goes for the TK Bad Moon and ends off the sequence with the Wild Assault. We are going to see one more mix up here from Rat has enough meter to close it off. It ties up the game count. Perfect as well. An exclamation point clapping back there from Rat, letting Marvello know that this is going to be a fight. Man, it is just, it's like, like you said, this, this match is just going so ahead. It feels like both players, it feels like they have to make these reads so quickly. Like the decisions that they have to make, they have to they have to be in their brain and out of their fingers and input into their controllers. At such a speed, it's like it makes it even hard to, to look at, let alone talk about. Yeah, but for sure, for sure. <laughs> oh, there we go. Six P. Gamma Blade coming through into the throw. 
Ooh, oh, oh. Meaty. Okay then. A good little meaty from Marbello. And plenty of meter to work with, especially with this positive bonus. Whoa! If he got the pickup, I would have popped off. But it's looking like the plus players are gonna be more than enough for Marbello. And Marvello so willing to try and chase Rat to the skies as well. There it is with the JK. Whoa. Oh, no. What a JK by Marvello. Like you said, hogging him down in the skies and able to drag him down, get the conversion, and get some good things going right now. Yeah, controlling land and air and trying to see winners. Finals, what an anti-air with the 5P as well. Oh, man. Good block from Marvello. Plus he jumps out and the DP is gonna give him the advantage. Oh, overhead connects. A little bit of a delayed PRC there. Get the pick up. All right, one more setup from Marbello and it's gonna close it out with the K Alpha Blade again. If I had a nickel for every time Marbello closed out one of these games with, with that K Alpha Blade, I'd literally have two nickels right now. We talked about it earlier, right? The fact that when you're at such low health, Alpha Blade is one of the last things on your mind. You're just trying to survive <laughs> the onslaught that's oh, coming. Yeah. It's like maybe you're trying to maybe you're trying to fuzzy jump. What I'm thinking might be happening. Is people might be trying to fuzzy jump out. Their jumps are getting caught, and they end up getting mixed, go to Empire. Mix versus mix, who makes better cake? I mean. You know. All right, yeah, there's the overhead coming in. Both these players are, both oh. players are cooking right now, that's for sure. A little too far away for the RMS, but we're able to pick things up. Uh oh. Oh, Capel's over the 5H, and it's gonna close it out. Yo, Rat is gonna try to keep himself in the Man, it's such, it's such a scary thing to try and play around, but it's looking like Marvello is doing a great job. Don't forget that he is still up 2 to 1. Again, chasing to the skies, keeping Rat jailed in the corner. Rat has not been able to escape from the corner at all once we get stuck there. The only way he gets out is by getting sent through the wall. Oh, man. Jump Fuzzy jumps out successfully for what feels like the first time. And catches him trying to jump. And then it's going to be Marvello on set point right now. Sticky Gamma comes through, pushing all the way to the corner. Again, look at the risk gauge. Oh no. It's like we are gonna need to see some kind of miracle out here from Rat if they wanna keep themselves in this thing. All right, it's looking like they got enough, but drops the combo. Heads right back overhead. We It's going to be 2-2 two, two after a little bit of spaghetti, but nothing that Rad is going to take for granted. Hey, I mean, Milia kind of thrives in the scramble, right? So, oh, yeah. Uh, the, the spaghetti situation, you know what? J she's Italian, all right? <laughs> Honestly, it's like, it's like, look, for the sake of argument, she definitely is because... It's like the way that the way that she was making that spaghetti and making sure that it was thoroughly cooked was outstanding. But now game five. Let's see who's gonna move on to winners Ooh, finals to face MFCR. Yes, uh, tries to hit ourselves with the, with the Artemis. We have been seeing that. As we, honestly, we've been seeing that move get so much usage, and it feels like it's just has, it's just a Swiss Army knife. Right? Like, you can use it in most situations. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly strong. I do ask though, chat, what's the frame date on that? <laughs> is it? What, what is it on block? Uh, it is minus two. Minus two? Damn, damn, that's good. <laughs> yeah, no, it's crazy. <laughs> Alright, all the 5 p anti-air, beautiful. Oh, there it is. And that is gonna be... Set point for Marvello once again. We saw Rat in the situation where he was fighting on the back foot before. Can he do it again? Will Marvello just take Rat out of the winner side of this bracket? The 5P hitting from behind the back as well, getting the burst there out of Rat. Marvello might be trying to win this. Bucket's whip punish. And now is it a terrifying spot. 
Yeah, but unfortunately, Rat putting himself into the corner is in dire straits right now. Avian, this isn't looking good. Oh, God. Hold, hold me, King Jobber. Hold me. What is Rat going to do to try to get out of this? And that K Alpha Blade killed? What? So I'm looking forward to that one. Now it's time, though, for Riley versus Cheerio. Another Gold Lewis Bridget matchup. Oh, man. Like, now it seems like Riley has had to go through the Gold Lewis gauntlet. Has had to take out Afo. Has had to take out Sid Victor. And now, as Cheerio, arguably the best out of all of them, standing in her way from advancing even further in this bracket. Yeah, just single handedly taking on the Gold Lewis army, the White Wild Assault army. Going ahead with the mix once again. So we've all seen yep. that before. Yep, gonna throw them into, into the killer machine. And one yep. more mix up here. Dashing right on in for the close slash. Sees that Chira doesn't have any meter available, right? So we're just gonna go right on in, establish some close range pressure. Chirio, of course, holding on to the burst. Here we go, right to the next round. Wild Assault set up the yo yo, and you're gonna get caught. And this is, again, you're just seeing why this is such a difficult matchup here for Goldless. White Wild Assault is what makes it bearable. But when you're out of it, you got to rely on your defensive tools. You got to rely on your pokes. And Bridget is going to outpoke you any day of the week. Yes, sir. I mean, those Bridget pokes are something to be feared indeed. But it's looking like Cheerio is playing without much fear. Feels like they know how to navigate these pokes incredibly well. Again, has to dash block so much just to get into that Behemoth Typhoon range, right? Get into that 2P or that far slash range. There's the far slash right on Q. Here we go. Tries to go ahead and catch that back dash. Isn't going to quite be successful, but the Wild Assault is going to be more than successful with it. Good tech from Riley. Got plenty of meter here on Cheerio's side. One more mix up. Good block from Cheerio. Immediate YRC. Doesn't want to deal with that. That was a brave press as well from Riley. Wow. What a press from Riley, like you're saying. Press there against the Behemoth. Now, the thing is, a lot of gold losers will get Maddie from mashing in that spot. But then you got to get somewhere. You can't let him be plus in your face forever. And that was pressing after a Kara Behemoth, right? Yes. The Ash Cancel Behemoth. So Gold was being even closer, being even more scary to deal with. But also, even though they are closer, because of that slight dash startup, you actually get more time to press in that gap. So Riley being able to pick their spots extremely well and honestly come out with the victory in an incredible fashion. Going to the back. Woo! Okay, same sides. Oh, jumping out, trying not to get hit by it's like by that skyfish. But you have other things on your plate now. Getting hit low, and Cherry is gonna end that with an incredibly quick perfect. Alright, we're jumping right in. Round start with the JD. Cherry starting to gain some momentum now. Cheerio has momentum, has to try to gain it back. The PRC is going to be a good indicator as he catches Riley trying to mash. Oh, catches the back dash, and that's going to be another dominant round as Cheerio strikes back and makes things one to one. And that was, yeah, absolutely, like you said, dominating, able to turn things around in a big way. Again, in a lot of cases, it's interesting. Strive is a very snowball heavy game. In some of these matchups that are difficult for Gold Lewis, <laughs> it's just get in. Use White Wall oh, yeah. Assault, get in, smother your opponent, make sure you play smart and choose smart options to cut off their escape path. Oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, and you have to know that Cheerio is incredibly well versus in this matchup. One of the best bridges in the world actually resides in the same exact region. So, Cheerio has plenty of matchup experience here. Wow. It's like, but. Also, Riley being able to capitalize on some of the mistakes that Cheerio is leaving, the holes that Cheerio is leaving, and putting him in a situation that far none could get out of. Yeah, and you see that RC empty low. 
staple of Guilty Gear Strive and that 5H, really, I mean, it, it's a measuring stick in this matchup. Oh, exactly. It's like, I mean, you, have, you have the far slash, you have the 5H, you have these incredible tools that allow you to gauge the range and get a great conversion, but the glass cancels TRC such awareness from Shiryo, and now he's going to get a chance to get even more of his offense started. Oh, another 6P here. Oh, and it's stomping right on Bridget's toes. Chat, can we get some alien emojis? Yeah, I'm saying it's like, listen, the alien has been putting in work all day. We've seen so many. We've seen so many gold losers today. Does that alien have a name? Do we know? It's uh the UMA. UMA. <laughs> Unidentified <laughs> magical animal. <laughs> It's not an alien, all right? Aliens don't exist. Yeah, it's a, it's a Here he goes to the yo yo again. All right. Find gold. Let's see gold is finding his way out. The drone, funnily enough, actually eating the hit from that yo yo, making it a lot less potent. Oh, this is such a scary spot here for Riley. Yeah, we're trying to get out of there. Goes low, and this might kill. It's gonna kill by far, and Cheerio is gonna take. The second, his second game. Yeah, getting it with the Kara Behemoth as well. Had to lock in with that execution there to make sure we could get the kill. Incredible. Oh, and yes, goodness. unidentified, uh, mysterious, mysterious animal. Mysterious <laughs> animal, mysterious animal. I see, I see. Get him Ross called some of the lines. Listen, we'll, 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 we'll figure that out, man. All we know is that he, he is definitely the MVP of this tournament. That man has been cooking. That's my favorite gold loose floor that he doesn't believe in aliens. <laughs> it's like, dude, you got one right there, man. <laughs> what are we doing? All right, nice dust box here. But it's not going to help you if you can't escape from the corner. You can flex your dust box all you want, but you got to get out. Oh, man. Yeah, the dust block only does so much, especially against the Bridget. Honestly, for a character that does no damage, a good little chunk. Maybe gonna try to catch the back dash. Attempts to. And now Riley is caught in a tough spot right now. Yeah, but DPing there with the RC. Oh, oh man. rolls right into the coffin. Oh, we got the mistiming on our meeting there with the JH. That was really unfortunate. But JS is gonna connect. Gonna be able to get the kill off this. But we spent the burst. We're gonna be a hero. We have a lot of meter. Oh, no. Like, will that situation pay off for Riley? We'll have to know if they lose their burst here. It could spell trouble going into the last round. I mean, that is a Beats big gamble. Dragon. Jumps out and is able to whip punish the shoot. Go to match point. And now Riley has no burst. They have to play defense the good old fashioned way against the man with some of the scariest offense in the game. Yeah, the gamble didn't pay off, but we got the offense going here in this next round. So maybe we don't even need the burst as long as we can uh, not allow Cheerio to play the game. Oh yeah, it's like, but barely isn't gonna get enough for the wild assault. So Cheerio is gonna have another chance to try to close this out, but the drone is gonna get neutralized. And now Riley can close it out here with barely enough meter. Oh, catches the back dash. Yeah, DP out with no meter, scary decision. But it ends up working out. We still have a lot wow. there. The 5H. The 5H keeping Riley in this thing down, but not out. Still match point for Cheerio. And things are going to get started hot with that back dash catch. Oh, no. All right, goes low. Cheerio's got blocked below. Oh, what a jump! Oh no, this is not gonna quite be able to kill. But it's gonna. Oh, wait, never mind. This might be able to kill. If Cheerio is able to churn, will the level 3 kill here? And not quite! One more touch, but it's not gonna kill off that interaction. Riley has one more chance to stay alive. This is gonna be a tall order, though. Here comes the laser! And just gets beat out as Riley tries to walk for three, one. Musashi answered it perfectly. The laser is designed to force an interaction with you. It comes from behind the player. Duel. If you block it, it pulls you all the way into Gold Lewis. It's just basically force something to happen. But yes. it's in Gold Lewis's favor. Yeah, it's like you, you literally cannot 
run away when that's on the screen unless you have very specific movement tools or you try and use a metered option which can get baited out it becomes a very potent tool for gold lewis to start his offense i still remember the foul slipping on the banana peel to avoid the laser that was the craziest thing i've ever seen but that's a good tag I see. let's see how sq is going to be able to go up against red here wakes up with them off the bottom coming out more damage being out here for sq uh oh has to correct themselves there but you know it should be more than enough as the red goes for the id back behemoth taking first blood of the set and this matchup was a, a a little bit on the scarier side you would hear from gold Lewis players right because it's just difficult gold Lewis not having access to a double jump being locked down in the corner like this white wild assault again it's like a remedy, it's a band-aid. It makes things a lot more manageable for Gold Lewis, but <laughs> SQ ain't making it look like that right now. Oh yeah, it's like it's too. It's like we, we would say that, but I mean just look at the pressure that SQ is able to apply with the Ondo, able to apply with the sword tosses, and it has plenty of meter to work with. Where do you get out as Gold Lewis? We're down a sword. This is an opportunity uh -oh. to close the gap. Down one sword. And not only down one sword, it's looking like Gold Lewis is going full steam ahead. Has enough meter for the Mortabata once again, but has to find a place to spend it. Oh, but PRC, unfortunately, you drop yourself right. Oh. oh. That feels Ooh. bad. She had Ouch. to sit there and, and, and think about the decision she made. Yeah, that was a really good RC from Red I Am Not. Had to sit there. I'm not going to lie. Had to be pretty disciplined. A lot of people would have swung into that a bit early. Got pushed out anyway. But Red take it, taking their time. Going ahead and getting the close slash punish to close things out. Yeah, and going up a game now. Getting that early lead. Man, and look at their points too. 3,900. Grinders. Got some grinders. I think the highest I've seen is like 12k, which was insane. That's crazy. <laughs> That's a lot of game. Shout out Fab. That's the goat. Right there. Oh, no. bro. You just got me thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a crazy tournament to watch. But we have a crazy tournament to watch right in front of our eyes. Both of these players sitting in top eight losers from the jump is something that I don't think any of us were expecting. 36k on pot. Oh my god. Oh, but the picks up there with the JP sending you through the wall with the super on top of that. This round has been all SQ. The hero burst from Red. Oh, and that gets shut down immediately by SQ. Does he want to play those games? And now Red I am not is down a sufficient amount of his resources, allowing SQ to just get things started. Yeah, that was a really unfortunate burst there because Almost giving this round away to SQ for free, it feels like. A red, known to make a lot of comebacks. They are one of the strongest Gold Lewis players in North America as well. Yeah, but they definitely solidify their name as one of the best on the character. If anyone can do it, they can. But also, if anyone can close out this game, it's SQ getting the perfect, tying us up one-to-one. -one. Honestly, I'm loving these back-and-forth sets that we're seeing in top eight. Absolutely. I mean, this is what you love to see. This is what I was going to say you pay to see, <laughs> which some of you do with subs, but you can also get it for free as well on the YouTube channel. Make sure to check that out. Xmish Point YouTube in the chat. You can also pay to watch by doing Xmish Point match. You know, got to plug that one more time. We're approaching the end of the bracket. If you want to see your favorite player get paid out today. Ooh, be sure to drop exclamation point match right down there. Donate, do some sponsor quests, get some money in the pot, give these players something to fight for. Here we go, Wild Assault, got you off the wall with the sword. It's time to go through. Positive bonus for SQ. Bottom coming out once again. Again, go for the mix once again. Oh, can SQ do it once again? Mix up one more time. Catches Red, trying to do something. He's gonna take him through the wall with another incredibly dominant round for SQ. Red holding on to the burst though this time. So now we do have a bit of a get out of jail free card if things get a little squirrely. But oh my god, oh, what happened to SQ? Man, this is so gross. 
This is not gonna quite kill, but it's gonna do a damn big chunk of damage. And SQ has one more interaction this round, just getting snuffed out by the 5k. 5k with a purpose. Uh-oh. Yep. I like the early burst. I like the early burst because you can still get the burst back. Gold Wiss does have a lot of defense. Oh, uh, there is a best three dash cancel. What a bottom. And now we have one more mix-up from SQ to try to close out the round. Will we go high? Will we go low? The 2S is going to catch him. And the Mortobato is going to put Red through the wall. SQ goes up two to one. Yeah, looking really strong again. Like you mentioned, back and forth this set here. Red having a lot of good ideas. I like the early burst there. I, oh, man. I hesitate to say lean, use more white wild assault, right? <laughs> that's, the, that's the meme. But obviously, it is a really strong tool. If we have it, maybe if we want to use that instead of burst, so that we can get those guard break opportunities to start running some offense. Duel. Yeah, something like, to at least put, us, put ourselves one run. foot ahead of S2. I feel like there's such a scary, uh, it's kind of a scary notion we're trying to use not burst of the matchup. Just because Gold Lewis's jump squad is longer, doesn't have a true reversal. The mashes are a little bit worse than the rest of the cast. And it makes trying to get out of this corner pressure a nightmare as we see literally right now. And there's a knockdown as well with the ball assault coming out from S2. They jump city. Oh, the dash of pro. Good luck on the low from SQ. Crank it out, the Mortobato, and it's gonna succeed. Oh no, that was a massive whip there on the 6H. Tried to go for it, meaty, but it didn't quite work. Oh man, and SQ is gonna go ahead, plank incredibly this set, set themselves up with a match point situation. Look at the respect between them both. Neither player wanting to shoot first. Yeah, like, like you see them both using their movement options. Not to throw out too many moves. But when one lands, you know they are going to pay for that. Look at the damage that SQ is able to do. So much damage, even with Gold Lewis's defense. And you should possibly be alive here. I actually don't know. I think there's oh, a little man. bit too much scaling on this. Um, no. No, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, it's like, was, was able to use extra meter there in order to secure the kill. Great job to SQ. Gonna be moving on. Red, I am not going to a respectable seventh place finish. It was a landslide. It was just really, it, it was brutal because Gold Lewis had such a difficult time dealing with the install pressure from ABBA. So I'm curious if Cheerio has any ideas of how to put a stop to that. Yeah, it's again, like, like you saw that you saw they were able to break down the Bridget matchup, which is one that was already said to be pretty hard for Gold Lewis. We have to see if Cheerio has answers for this matchup as well. Ooh. I like it. We're just going for a lot of 5 8 command dash until we build up enough of that jealousy rage. But I love the neutral jump JD, knowing that once we are in the install, we are going to put the pedal to the metal, right? Move forward immediately. Yep. And now Abba is out of jealousy rage. But the one thing that she's definitely not out of is P buns. We might try to see a match out opportunity here from Keishi. Oh, tries to go for the back dash and gets called out by the 426 behemoth. And there it is, 2P Bionic Elbow. Good old Dusty Road. Oh no. Burned some of that burst on the bottom ball, and now is able to insult up. Oh my goodness, it's such a scary spot. Look at how much ground Abba is able to cover. Bro, that gap was the speed is insane. Goes low, and this is not gonna quite be able to kill, but the jealousy is so high. And what is that? Was that far slash? Or is that 5H? I think it was 5H. Five. <laughs> Five is gonna cook up that. Oh, there we go. Can be Mark. All right, that's far side. That's far side. Into the overhead immediately. And look at this. We are at full jealousy gauge now. 
Jealous Rage with the fuzzy. Oh no, this could be as good as dead. Oh, that's gonna king. be way more than enough. Look at the damage that Abba is able to do. A perfect to end off game number one. Yeah, it does more damage, I believe. The the more that she, the more jealousy gauge that she has. So yes. we were nearly at max there. And like, yeah, so she is like, yeah, she's actually able to. You know, we see some crazy combos come out already. Where when you end off with basically full jealousy, like that super is absolutely destroying you. Doing like you're doing yep. like 40 50 percent and then when it scaled still racking up about 30 percent damage like it's definitely something crazy yeah her offense Dual is one. devastating gets the conversion look at that routing Whoa. Oh, that was outside of jealous rage i can't believe that case got something like that look at that 40 percent outside of jealous rage on gold lewis Things that these people are able to find on week number one is so crazy, just like that fuzzy setup. Big boy problems. Oh man. So crazy too, because everyone else experiencing those big boy problems as well. Everyone falls prey to the ABBA fuzzy. Oh, and there's the 2K command dash. Oh my goodness. What? Like this matchup, I don't know if Keiji just played it a lot. Or genuinely looks as bad. But Keiji makes it look like one of the worst matchups in the game right now for Gold Lewis. I mean, it very well might be with the level of offense that is available. Backdash on that behemoth. That was good. That was a really good backdash from Keiji, and that was gonna give them a chance. Oh, we are just sending it. Yeah, we're going Keiji, down. Trying to go for the overhead. Very nice stuff, and now we get to run our own pressure, but we run right into a key. What pressure are we running? We're running right into Abba's pressure, it feels like. Guys are under the drone. Slowly trying to advance. It is looking like, yeah, just one more opportunity, though. Just for Shiryu to go ahead and close out that round. Yeah, but now Shiryu needs to close out the game as oh, well. Yeah. You cannot allow Keishu to get a 2-0 lead. There's a nice pickup OTG with the 5k into the dash cancel just to get some closer to human pressure. Oh, man. I'm loving the tech that Keishu is using. They just use the, they use the Wild Assault to go into the safe install. And has been putting in so much work so far in these matches. I mean, Abba really thrives with that Wild Assault. But look at this, completely out of jealous rage and low on life. This is where Cheerio smells the blood. Gets the throw, sets up the drone. Do it, good throw tech from Keishu to keep themselves in this one. We know that if they get any jealousy bar, then this could be brutal for Cheerio, but neutralizing it with the white wild assault and closing out the second game of the set. That was really smart there from Cheerio after getting such a huge lead, only needing about one more hit to get the kill to just back off. Keishu had absolutely no jealous rage, was going to have to approach with Abba's abysmal approaching tools while yes. in the regular mode. Yeah, it's like, would have had to do something crazy to try to get in there, but you know what? It's like, Gold Lewis has always got those options available to him, and Cheerio able to use them to perfection to close out that set. Good stuff from him. Very curious Let's to see. see what adjustments both these players are going to make in their next match. It is one to one, and it feels like all of these games have been close. So I don't know what either player can do in particular to try and gain a definite edge here. All right, well, JD is a good start there from Cheerio, though. 100%. <laughs> right, good throw. Yeah, if you could just smother Abba. Don't even allow her to get into her jealousy rage. And I love that. Creating some space to make sure you don't block the wild assault because that's a guaranteed install. Oh, man, it's like it's so scary. It's like now that, like you said, the first is off the table. This matchup becomes so much less scary for Cheerio. We're starting to feel a lot more comfortable. Comfortable, excuse me. Go throw. Oh no, it's like the BTs, combo all. You have to use something to get out, but nothing that uses is gonna be enough. Was that a double perfect?
Yeah, that was devastating. I mean, all oh, exactly. Uh, you just got to stay close. We we countered the options that Keishu tried to do ooh. to get into Jealous Rage, and <laughs> Abel was helpless, like a oh. like looking like a magic carp, just flailing with Splash. Oh my gosh, no, Abel can't even. It's like it's so funny that like if you have to use the burst for other things, there's nothing that Abba can do. <laughs> like it just feels like she's stuck there trying to find one opportunity to maybe go ahead land the 2p confirm that into Ooh, the command wow. grab but you know other than that you're pretty much stuck yeah stuck until you can hit that gyarados form you know what i'm saying <laughs> exactly but like, go ahead and evolve down there from late and look at this just the pressure unstoppable jumping back setting up the drone oh the fact that she's with the drone that was not good there's the first No. This is brutal. The 50-50s are so crazy. Yeah, the 50-50s are crazy. So you gotta make sure that they kill or put you right back in to Jealous Rage. Because otherwise, you're in a pretty rough spot now. This is the place you want to be though. If you're Keishu, the hate grab is coming out and we are back in JR. Oh, we're being smothered right now. There we go. YRC right into the overhead. Oh, oh, the no. knob's eye. Crazy. Get the key as well. Do it slightly more. Get in the 5 age now. Swing in the 5 age. And great anti air. Alright, so the reflect shield's out. Oh, I was gonna say KG needs a big read and gets it. Demolishes the wild zone and. Yeah. He's gonna get down with assist though. Here we go, about to get 50 bar as well. Oh, now we're gonna deal with it and just deflects a jump back out. What a confirm by Keishu. We've been seeing these all day, and it's gonna take yet another round for him. Now we're so close to what a clash! We're so close to bringing this oh, all the way to game five. We could very well be seeing the game five here, especially with the way that Keishu is playing in this fourth game. He's gonna get so much more of that jealous rage back. He's gonna enter the mode immediately. The way that Keishu was able to convert off of that clash, get the pickup straight into the key oh, special. Not even a question. Oh wait, it might be though. Look at yeah. No, eight. It's barely gonna kill. We are going to a game five. Oh, or oh, we're yeah, we are, we are. Uh, I thought we were. All right, you know what? Uh, maybe. Uh, okay. We definitely are just maybe taking a little bit of a breather here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're jumping right back on. Oh, no. Like, yeah, they're, they're just going right back, too. You know, that's what, that's what I love about these guys. Like, listen, it's game five. I'm trying to keep my, my hopes alive since we're, in the, since we're on the loser side, right? We're going to run that back regardless, baby. We've got to keep gaming. Let's see if Keishu can keep it up, though. Can prove all the ABBA doubters wrong. Move on to loser semis. Oh, man. Uh -oh. Look at that. Yeah, the guaranteed install. The install's got to come out because you see that we're seeing a lot of the manual transitions from Keishi's side because you need to maintain that meter if you want to have a fighting chance against this game. Beautiful 6P though. Whoa! Here we get the meaty 2P. Here you'll probably are going to get a free punish. And you cannot hit by the second hit. That far away, bro. Second hit of the Donzai. One more mix up from Keishi to try and close this out. Blocks the fuzzy, and now it's Cheerio's time to shine. Well, first we gotta figure out a way to get our back off the ropes, oh, and we're not going to. Man. Cheerio, the knees are weak now. Yep, we saw a Cheerio match point, but now Keisha was able to bring it all the way back and get themselves into a game five last round situation for themselves. No wild assault that they could easily do right now. Very curious to see how they try to do this. Keishu is slowly pulling his key forward. Ooh. Oh no, this is gonna be really bad. Yeah, you're dead here. I'm dead. Final game, final round, here it comes. Yeah, but it's like, listen, Cheerio's not dropping those. We are going as my boy King Jopper said, final game, final round, starting things off, back dashing the white wild assault. Keishu is locked in and ready to go. Yeah, Keishu is trying to fish for that 5H. I guess the 6P, though, the moment that we see Chiro's feet leave the ground. There it is. Oh, man, the Donzai is coming out. 
helping out with that conversion. And as we see, getting so much more of that jealousy bar. Look at the dash. I actually love going for the Skyfish there. Unfortunately, it might not be enough to save you. Uh-oh, does it barely run out the bar? And it's gonna live! It's looking like Keishu has one more opportunity to try and close this out. But, you see that Cheerios pulled out all the stops. Trying to pull out the wire seat. Trying to get something going here. Throws them into it. Jumps out, and now one more mix-up from Keishu. The throw is gonna take it! Oh my goodness, the throw is gonna move Keishu on in the bracket. Set of the day is going to be. Yeah, SQ versus Rat here. This is gonna be a fire one coming up. Of course, SQ, the queen of Ram. Rat, stick it strong with Amelia. Oh yeah, the green rat is one of Amelia's strongest soldiers. Many have ventured away from the path, but Rat is one of those players who truly believes in this character and his faith has been rewarded. And I have never 360 no scope coming through with the 350 to the Maturino. Thank you so much. This prize pool needs that 350. I agree. I I know I'm one of those three. Feels like SQ is gonna need this wall break. Now no hard knockdown going up against neutral against Millie is still pretty tough. We're being honest. All right. Oh, trying to go for the Artemis there, but just a little too far away to get the conversion after the counter hit. Uh, now only a trade away. Tries to air throw the Artemis. Gets the anti-air. Close slash, and we all know this is going to kill. So oh, I my goodness. On in. <laughs> Thank you, Sunder Cat, coming through. Gifting another 5 to the match arena. This prize pot is looking crazy right now. Yeah, 267. Uh-oh, we'll confirm uh, here off the explosion from the swords. Oh, maybe I don't know if that was an intentional drop or maybe we just went for it to keep Nilia in the corner. I was going to say the same thing. I don't know if we want to go for that drop or, you know, if it's to just drop, then it happened to be in a very favorable spot. All right, RC, bring the rock in, get the plus frames. Another anti-air close slash. Man, I'm saying the anti air close slash is just such a scary tool, especially because of how high it hits for Milia. Right, take it to the skies, too. Interesting to see SQ taking to the skies against Milia. I mean, probably, maybe preemptively expecting them to go there. Oh, yeah. It's like, I mean, like you were saying before, one of the keys to the match, no matter who you're playing, is keep Milia on the ground. And for some characters, like as like like uh in particular ram where they have those pretty far reaching and pretty fast but oh my god what are we watching he's happening over here and then harassing the most crazy things i've ever seen oh, my god ram. nice juggle all the How way to the wall as well break the wall i was thinking that maybe we'd just be a little too far away but that positive bonus is going to be a huge boon here for sq setting up the gamma ray to close out the round there it is, just barely doing enough with that fixed wall damage, and SQ is going to take the game. I mean, SQ looking so strong here. Got sent to losers really early on in pools by CPU, but has made such a massive run back. Had to play so many matches just to get here. God, man, it's like it feels like SQ, like I said, like I said, already sent two losers in pools. So has to run a ton of matches. I'm honestly, I'm actually gonna go ahead and see that yeah, I was about she to is currently many. eight and one. Dual eight one. and one is insane. Oh my gosh. Besides and Riley, some of the most matches played so far in this bracket. She lives to play gear. She's doing a damn lot of it. Trying to play even more gear. Over here, has Millie in the corner. Honestly, not too bad for Millie just because of how good her jump is. But SQ is making it look easy right now. Yep, right there into the super again. Take another round, simple and clean with the perfect. Oh man, it's like now we already saw a dominant game from SQ before. Starting things off with a perfect is a great way to just show that the momentum is very easily in your favor. And I love the patience too. The patience to kind of sit back at your far slash range, right? 
just kind of seeing how is Rack going to approach, playing uh, in a reactive style. Oh man, received all the stagger pressure from Rat. Trying to find a way in without being too committed to something like the Bad Moon or something like the Castle. Oh, what Whoa. was that interaction? That was squirrely as all hell, but Rat still oh. comes out on top in the end. Master of the scramble. We are down the there world? in the subways. Listen, all I know is that Rat is the king of the scramble, showing themselves there, but there's so much reward that Ram is able to get in SQ by extension, just like we are gonna get an extended pod here from Tim CB coming through 30 bucks in the match arena. That's my goat. And Tim putting us all the way to a top four payout now. We are oh, this is fighting for the money. It's like this is this is a money round right now. If you want a chance to be in this prize pool, you gotta fight for your life. And Rat is doing that with success right now. Look at those Artemis loops, the damage. That's a lot of red. And Rat is seeing red. Oh man, goes for the bad moon. And is able to bait the burst in the air. And Rat is gonna take a game of their own. And that was not a bad burst by any means from SQ, right? To try and get out of that situation. But Rat was just two steps ahead, turning this into a competitive set. Absolutely not. I mean, it's like Rat just showing that they can never be counted out. Now, I feel like Rat is definitely a very snowball -y player, has to get the momentum going at all. But what makes him so scary is that even though he does need the momentum, he's able to pull it from any point. Yes. Uh, it doesn't matter how behind he is, he can come back. He gets that one knockdown, everything can go completely south for his opponent. Sadly, everyone knows that much too well. I'm telling you this, this, this rap pressure and now this SQ pressure have just been so ridiculous. It feels like we're in a battle of two offensive powerhouses right now. Again, it's a little bit of like, oh my God, I so many times with Goldus on screen that fly in the fly swatter and that fly just got swatted into the next round with a perfect. Oh my God, how did that? I was just. Oh, this is ridiculous. Like, that did so much damage. It's a great Guts Crush Super, right? Because it hits so many times. Oh, uh, yeah. It's like, I mean, it definitely isn't a certain amount of damage. Oh, what, what a pick up there with the 5k from SQ. And then the 6p. Rat has been denied the skies. Again, we talk about it so much. Milia strong in the air, but Rat has not been able to take flight. There we go. Oh, I'm seeing the vision. Are they able to get a conversion? No, they just want to go for the hard knockdown. Go for something crazy. Oh, they get the cross up and oh, no. for their troubles, they're going to get hit. Not able to continue the offense and SQ taking great advantage of that and going up two to one. Yeah, just kind of stopping there. We could have st stealed our turn back or stolen our turn back. We had some burst available, but maybe it was looking for... I don't know, fishing for some kind of a reversal, fishing for like a YRC, something like that. Unfortunately, gave up the turn and ended up losing that game for it. And now, SQ is at game or set point, just two more rounds. Yep, finding themselves on the back Duel foot here. One. Like you said, top four payout is upon us. This is a game for some money right now. Oh no, throwing you right before the sword explodes. We're starting to incorporate more of that throw into the strike throw game. Oh, you're dead. Yep. Oh my, the health bar didn't even have to show. We just know that they were dead. Not even a problem. See Marvello answer. See Marvello is in the lobby. They are ready to go. Alright, right, finding the On the lead back foot here. One more round for SQ. Come through, try to take it. Yep, first comes out though from SQ now. Recognize the dangerous situation that she was in and wanted to get out of it. Oh man. That is getting mashed out on. And now, there we go, finds the offense once again. Have to try and find one mix up, or you can bait out the YRC and hope to do enough to kill, but drops that's the fine. combo. Yeah, that's, that's gonna fine. be, it's gonna be okay. That's gonna be just okay. Yeah, it looks like Rat is still getting a little used to the Artemis combos there in the corner. Yeah, that was pretty scary there, but was able to close it out. And now, Rat finds themselves in a much better situation. 
as they have a bit more burst than execute. All they gotta do is find one jump out of the corner, and we are back to an even game. That saying, much better yeah. situation, is crazy. It's like, listen, now he's good, he's good, listen. You're not wrong, that's trust the him, thing. Trust in my goat, trust, trust, trust in the goat. Oh uh, no, oh no, well. That's full burst, that's full we burst. We are yes. going, we are going to the next round. Congratulations to full SQ. Full risk. Full Don't risk, even yeah. gotta worry full about risk. it. It's over. SQ is able to take that. One. I was so I was so overwhelmed by that. I said full burst <laughs> instead of full risk. Honestly, these two play so much. This could be a literal coin toss. But King Jobber, how are you feeling about this set so far? Uh, I mean, I really don't know. Honestly, I feel like they're so <laughs> evenly matched. But I would like to think Marvello has already, uh, you know, made it clear that he wants to kind of go off the chip and main Slayer when Slayer drops. MFCR, oh, yeah. I don't know what he's thinking too. He's messaged me about Slayer, so both my, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how both of them feel about currently maining these characters in the future, but Leo does come out in the damage department for sure. Oh yeah, it's like, I mean, we talk about mobility and damage, even though Chip is able to navigate around some of these options, the way that Leo is able to play around DT and really punish you for it in a lot of situations makes it so hard for Chip to deal with. Marvello now trying to get some pressure started of their own. We have seen Chip do a little bit of damage you know, on some of those higher risk hits. Yeah, but here we go, getting the knockdown with the wild assault into that positive bonus. Baits out the DP. Yeah, and MSPR not having any meter to protect him there. Yep, and then right there. Go right into the barrage. That's going to be more than enough. And it's like, looking like Chip is doing a little bit of damage himself there. Marvello is going to tie things up one to one in the first game. So far, Marvello. Oh no, the 2D, 2D into the DP, that's the classic. Yeah, all the way back to season one, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, we, it's like we've been doing that since the beta. Like, this has been something that we've been seeing forever. But, doesn't need to see the Marvello chip forever. He's going to be able to find his way out. One more mix up and just throws them into it. That combo was so aware, trying to give to give Marvello absolutely no opportunity to go ahead and burst there. Yeah, he definitely waited for a split second there before dashing in to get the throw. Very smart awareness from MFCR. And that's gonna reward him game number one there with that patience. Yeah, I mean- Of course, like, Marvello, you know, save and burst for next game. Yeah, exactly, it's like, listen, that might come in handy. Next game, I got my burst stocks ready to go. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm going to be chilling after, so don't worry about it. But Diamond hands, brother. Keep on holding, baby. That's what, they, that's what they've been saying for years, ever since the game was coming out. But it's looking like MFCR is trying to hold on to more than just the burst. This man has a lead to maintain. That early burst. Still getting tossed into the corner, though, while Marvello is sitting on nice resources here. Goes low, good block on the low by MFCR. Enforces out the burst from Arvello. You already know that he needs a burst there. Both of these guys also level with players, so their dashing is absolutely insane. The dash block game that both of them have. There's the overhead into the fast PRC. I'm so jealous. <laughs> I don't know, man. That it, hitbox hurts my hands. <laughs> I'll just play stick until I die. <laughs> Alright, 2k into 6k. Alright, here we go. Big damage for MSCR. Look at the 80% combo that this man was able to do on the 7 beat. And then the match by Marvello to keep him in this one. Picked up as well. Nice. Getting the hard knockdown, positive bonus with already over 50 meter. Oh, I love it! Gamma Blade PRC, so you can follow up after the hit. Oh, I like that little little puppet character, uh, little puppet character shooting Ooh. there. Oh no! Oh, he hit him with Line all the way up over his head. Tried to kill there, and now it's looking like MFCR is gonna also save his burst for the next game. I don't the know gentleman's what it is, but... burst agreement. Yeah, I don't know what it is about not bursting on these rounds, but it, it looks like we just aren't seeing it. Yeah, just not really getting the opportunity to. Trying to hold it on for uh, 
you know, the moment that they feel like is best, but victory just comes too swift. Yeah, it's like literally they are winning too fast. I mean, I was thinking about both these characters. Like I said, we talk about momentum. There is nothing that spells momentum more than either of these characters. It feels like you don't even have a chance to burst after a certain point in both of these matches. And I that's mean, not even when you go for Yeah, They're exactly. so good at baiting it out. Once again, I really like that cross up. Oh, meaty close slash there. Marvello, yeah, bursting for his life. That's actually a scary place to burst on a close slash. Oh, yeah, it's like, I mean, we, I think that we've all been there. We've all gotten close slash punished off that, but, you know, risk to make champions, I guess. Open is to run through. Nice blocks. The defense from Marvello is fantastic, but how oh. long can we survive? Oh, he jumps out. Oh no, gets thrown. And now Marvello is gonna get his corner stolen. MFCR said, put that corner in the bag and follow it up with the round. He is gonna take that one. Yeah, up in burst gauge as well here. Trying to play the footsies game. There we go. Finally, Rash just rushes on in to get the 2K. Not gonna find be able to connect. Good combo. Oh, oh. Axe kick. We were oh my there. god! Oh my god, Berserker Barrage as well. Will it reach the corner? It absolutely does. Oh wait, that was insane. He used the he used the back turn S as a cover, knew that he was gonna go behind him. Oh, wanted that first. Tries to go in after. Low slash, but you gotta watch out for the DP. It's not our own burst. Run through. No the defense from Marvello has been incredible. Look at that. Blocking another run through there as well. But get hit by the far slash. Yes, sir. We're going over here. We got Marv. We got Marvello going down in the game count so far. TNS's very own going up two games to one. And we're in another spot where honestly it just feels like maybe one less drop on this side or one more correct guess is more than is going to be more than enough to, you know, just swing the tide in Marvello's favor. Yeah. You see Marvello's having a difficult time going for some of that footsies game as well. MFCR has really been on his toes with those preemptive buttons. Oh, that's like, I do want to see, I want to see if Marvello can take this one to a game five. I mean, the people want to see it for sure. Winners finals. This one is huge. It's to get in to grand finals on the winner's side. My God, that really gauge. All right, Marvello able to turn the tables here. No good conversion, but I mean, Leo's defense is so good that it feels like it barely put a chink in the armor. Oh, you saw that there. We went, we got the just block, and MFCR tried to go for a throw punish, but is gonna be able to get an anti-air 5P. Oh, maybe he wanted the burst, but gets it a bit later than expected. Oh no, we're punished on anything's button. So much respect from both players. And we had a chance to see a great conversion, but drops on both sides. Oh, you have so much meter and is not gonna get the opportunity to spend it here. The Red Roman cancel with the wall break will be enough to close out the round in Marvello's favor. Uh, yeah, you see, you see something here. The first combo they get completed is the one who's gonna end up closing out the round there. Oh, oh, I did into the corner. Interesting I don't trade. Know. I always forget that that goes to the corner, even on block. Great awareness by Marvello, the right thing right there. Oh, it's so nasty. They said Leo couldn't open people up, so you know. Oh, oh my, yeah, allegedly. I remember those passes too, though. Me and my, me and my friends were laughing. We're like, all right, man, whatever you say. Oh, yeah, I was laughing then. I ain't laughing now. This character's crazy. <laughs> I was like, hey, like this is this is scary, man. This is scary. A dash of 2D into the OTG, trying to go for the heavy mix-up game here, but Marvello not quite able to hit the mark. Box him on the dome, gets the cross through on the other side. And he bursts. Oh, the oh, back, back dash, dash no punish, and what a way to close out the round. Gets the dash up throw, catches Marvello trying to block, and now MFCR is gonna be on set point. In a very familiar sight we saw before, going for the hero burst and it doesn't pay off. Now you're stuck at set point with no burst to save you. 
And MFCR is putting him into the blender. Oh no. This is such a scary spot, especially when they're getting hit like that. This should be over if MFCR if MFCR can finish his play, and he sure does. MFCR is going to grand finals on the winner's side. Cracked as he is jacked. Using Graham's incredible normals. Yeah, I think it's definitely yeah, far slash, heavy slash, and the rock, I feel like are gonna be uh are gonna be really strong tool. Duel one. Yeah, I I was like, I, I, was just, I, was like, I wonder how how he was gonna figure out a way to navigate around the rock. It feels like it's gonna be such a potent tool against normal mode ABBA. Right now we're just playing that footsies game and it's working out incredibly well. Put ABBA into the corner. One of the biggest threats so far that we have seen in normal mode is the 5H. And if you have a button that outranges it, if you have two that outrange it, then what are you even supposed to do? Still alive, just barely, but that's a hard knockdown in SQ. Nearly on a perfect here. Yeah, the getting things started off incredibly hot, and the throw to secure the perfect SQ is making a statement in the first game. And it's really difficult because we have to approach them where we can at least get into heavy slash range, right? So we can force that heavy slash block, go straight in to the wild assault, and get our free install. Yeah, but like at least, at the very least, try to play some footsies. But it does make it very hard, especially in this matchup where it feels like KG's buns are just going to get outclassed. If you see there, extremely minus there with so much recovery, and now. Cage is going to be paying for his crimes of trying to get that heavy slash going. Oh, oh! Fire C, you are dead, dead, dead. What a bait on that YRC. SQ is going to take it with two perfects in a row to get things started. That's brutal. You start to see some ideas, though, from Keishu, right? Keishu went for the guard point there to build up some of that jealousy gauge. If we can use the guard point to build up some jealousy gauge and allow us to install from further away at a safe range, then we can just rush on in, right, and try and get some offense established. We don't necessarily have to get into that 5H range. We just want yeah. the 5H because we want the Wild Assault for the safe install. Yeah, honestly, it's like you at least want to get, yeah, like you said, the 5H Wild Assault safe install. But what I think we might be seeing soon from case from Keishu is we might be seeing some preemptive command dashes to call that out. We haven't seen any of those grounded buttons. And we've only been seeing like you see that far slash option that would get beaten out by that command dash. There you go. Already now already in. Now you can play some real footies. Unless the rock comes out and stifles all of your chances of doing so. Well, the final boss? Dwayne oh, Johnson? Man. <laughs> Like we saw, we saw him yesterday. We're seeing him return today. Trying to end Abba's story. Uh, finally gets into the install, but now it's looking like Abba's got a block. So all of that jealousy meter has gone to waste. It feels like. Yeah, but there's the YRC. Oh no! Jealousy is gone. And yeah, this is looking really difficult for Keishu to just figure out how to navigate this neutral, right? You need to find that, you need to find the perfect hit. You need to thread the needle and then not let go, and that is so hard. Yeah, so not only do you have to get in, I feel like Rams with tools to mash out are so good. Gets the inherent burst bait, but doesn't have the swords to be able to finish it off. Oh no. So plus. Gets the counter, but it's not yeah. gonna matter. See, what good is the counter? We, I think we tried to go for counter into counter, right? <laughs> yeah, might have tried it, but you know, we, the one thing that you do have to know is that that counter is not frame one. I believe it is frame five, but if you try to do it on wake up and you get meted, it is completely over in case you was experiencing that with three perfects and four rounds for SQ. Yeah, SQ is just staying at the perfect range, staying oh, at- Oh, frame at seven. Five. Even worse, oh my gosh. SQ is just staying at, at 5H range, uh, just outside of it, right? To try and whiff punish or keep Keishu out, sending out the swords. It, it's just proving to be a really hard battle to overcome. And Keishu is trying to do everything Dual that they possibly one. can, right? Let's We're run. even going for installs. You saw we tried to go for an install at a well, farther range to stay safe, but it just wasn't effective. And then the moment we get the hit, there's the burst. SQ putting a stop to any momentum right there. 
Zach exactly. was like, you gotta get. Like, while Abba has to keep the momentum, SQ on the ramp has so many tools to keep that momentum stifled and even shut down altogether. Yeah, this is just, uh, it's just bullying is what it is. I feel so bad for him, man. SQ just has to play uh, in a reactive play style. And that's exactly <laughs> what she's doing. I mean, that's all SQ's really doing is they're just sitting back, hanging out. Hold up. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. All right. Let him cook. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Goes on the normal throw. Well, this is exactly what case you need. Overwhelming offense against all odds. Oh, man. This looks like we're going to see the first round from Keishu. Oh! Oh! Whoa, what is that shimmy? Oh, my God. The half screen shimmy is what you need. And Keishu has found a lifeline in what looks like a very dominant set from SQ. This is it. We just have to get into Jealous Rage. But now we're right back to square one. Oh no. Counters it. And now finds himself on the back foot once again. Oh no. This is going to be huge damage. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh no. There's barely going to be risk. Oh, oh no. Into the key grab. We have full jealousy meter. Oh man, and even they have full jealousy. We get to see the gold burst from Keishu. Trying to close this out. Good block from SQ, but it's not gonna be enough. The Daza to close it out, and Keishu is on the board. With a dominating round there as well. Wow. This is this is exactly what we mean when we say feast or famine. If she can get that jealousy gauge up, comfortably get into the install, you better pray. Pick a god and pray. Oh man, like that's all you can do. It's just like, it's like when the install is just such a scary position. I mean, it's like oh, that's, oh, that was obvious to say, but it's like I mean, when you get into it, she just has so many ways to stay in there and stay in the install. Yep. Speaking of it, get to the install again with the wild assault. Oh man. Come back once again and going right back into it. That is hilarious. Or tries the idea out. Good match from SQ. And now SQ being a lot more aggressive, right? <laughs> oh yeah, like now it's like wait a minute. Let me try let me try to these games as quickly as possible, especially now that there is no jealousy on the side of Keishi. Just because I like of I like turning it up, being a little bit more aggressive about this, right? Not giving Keishu any room to breathe. Yep. It's like, that's something like, especially when they have no jealousy, you have to make sure that they can't even get any in the first place. And it's going to be another down around by SQ. We are sitting at set point. Uh-oh. Good backdash from SQ. But now they're just hanging out in the corner. How will Keishu on the ABBA be able to navigate the situation? Yeah, no first available. Uh oh, here we go. Install time. Donzai to break the wall. We all know about Donzai, baby. The movement is so insane. It looks so, it looks so sick. This is the Goku Marha that they warned us about in plus R, and Keishu is showing it unleashed right now. It will take another it. round. Y'all ever played Bloodborne and been in those Chalice dungeons? You know exactly what I'm talking about with the way that she moves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yep. It's it's to go into that's the why it's so difficult to just go for the raw install because the 5 H reach is so far for SQ. I mean, they specifically said they want to make it really tough for you to go into it. We weren't really seeing that in the other sets, but with normal like Rams that are able to just dominate that mid range, I can definitely see where the devs are coming from with that. Things too good. We still have burst available. We go for the fast PRC. Doesn't quite get us in, but SQ opts to close the distance herself. Alright. I don't think we're gonna quite get the kill. Yeah, and if you get hit here. Yeah, you gotta block one more. And goes for the deflect shield. And SQ is gonna clean that up three to one as we turn over to a new 
chapter. We have SQ versus Marvello. Lock it in right now. Running back on the Council of Three. Give me something good to watch, y'all. I'm excited. Oh my god, 5H right there at round star, putting the palms out. All right, we are looking over here. We got S2 already in the corner. Seeing some of that Panzi Marvello ship pressure coming out already. Trying to catch SQ slipping just once. Does and then catches her burst as well. Our splash hits its mark. Full counter hit combo, keeping it close. Trying to get the win punish. Great counter punish by SQ in order to send through the wall. Not quite enough. Maybe a car super. Oh my god! What was that? No, nothing personal, kid. Oh my god, literally teleports behind you. But 100 bar coming out from both of our competitors here. Gives the confirm off of the 5k. And this is going to be more than enough. Uh, it costs it costs 100 meter and guilty gear to do what, what Scorpion can do for free in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> it's, it's like it gave him over there with the teleport. We love to see it. Love to see the Uzumaki Barrage as well. Positive bonus for Marvello. Ooh, I'm yet E. Not quite pushing up far enough though. Mortal counter on the 5 8 Oh no, that level four counter. Man, you can feel that through the screen. I'm telling you. There we go, gonna go right back there into the clone, bring out all three of the brothers, no Lewayne, and now we're getting a hard knockdown here. Cross up, and that's gonna be enough for Marvello to take it. One round apiece, Marvello though coming into this next round with no burst on deck. Alright, Fuzzy Jump was barely able to come out for Marvello. Gets the reversal. It seems like it hit late. I'm not too sure about what SQ was trying to do there. More counter on the 2D. Yeah, not sure what she was trying to do there, but now she's got to figure out a way to get out. Oh, no. What a kind soul, Marvello, helping her escape from the corner. Uh oh. Oh man, what? Got the wires is coming out on both sides. SQ has one more chance to get something to happen. Gold burst is blocked. Yeah, gotta be careful about those whiffs. Uh oh, no more meter. Uh oh, good blocks though from SQ. Keeping oh. herself in this one. And every time no Marvello backdashes, he's looking for a whiff punish. You see him trying to go in with that 5P, oh. but finally he's able to get the trade and take game number one. Yep, we got the trade coming out. And now Marvello is gonna take, as you said, the first game. Bit of a nail biter, but able to take it there with the trade. Now, both of these players are doing an outstanding job. It feels like we're just seeing, and it feels like we're seeing Marvel should be a little bit more correct. Like, it feels like he's doing he's doing the usual chip stuff, but he just is correct in this instance. Yeah, I mean, you put him into the 50 50s, you try and get those whip punishes on Ram. Ram does have some recovery there on those normals. Far side five H. Seen that one many a time. Beginning of this game, and we've also seen this crazy chip pressure from Marvello this whole time. Where are we going after this throw? We're going for another one. We got yep. three. Oh no! They wanted to get, they wanted to get the strike. I respect it. Oh no! For sure dead. And Marvello is running away with this one right now. We can get that 2-0 lead. But SQ is kind she's kind of the queen of 3-0 comebacks, it feels like. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know what they're doing in her chat to make her level up and lock in like she does. But whenever she's down 2-0, I'm honestly more scared than when the set has started. And we, we that's looking a lot more likely. There it is with the wall splat into the barrage. You better believe it, Marvello's up 2-0. Yep, we are up two to zero. We have, it's like we have SQ who is fighting for the people that she loves, AKA Twitch chat. And then we have Marvello who's coming through and he is a momentum based machine. When he starts going fast, all he can think about is putting his foot harder on the gas pedal. I'm curious to see how the clash of the situational Titans is gonna play out. I mean, that's the kind of mindset you have to have to be a chip player. Faster, faster until the thrill of speed outweighs the fear of death.
And now Marvello is up 2 0. Oh, looking to try and take things home for nine moons. Yeah, it's like we got the, got the little nine moons versus T and S trying to happen right now. But SQ can prevent that right now and try and carve her own story out of this mountain right now. Let's see, round start situation. Tries to go for the 2K. Immediately. Oh, oh no. No punish on the beta oh. blade. Throughout the close slash just a little too early. She wasn't turned around. Like I said, threw the close slash a little bit too early down to the frame. And now Marvello is going to get a chance to get things started. But a timely match from SQ is going to take that momentum right back. Oh my god, you're dead. No, not quite, not quite. I looked at the wrong meter for a yeah, second. Yeah, I thought yeah, yeah. Right <laughs> no, that one would have been crazy. That one would have for sure killed, though. We all know about these guts. Oh, oh, we right. backdash the shuriken, but what? Oh, Whoa. catching the backdash with the alpha blade PRC. Yeah, maybe just trying to get out of there. I assume potentially wanted to catch the burst and not be caught in the corner. Oh, SQ thinking they can do it. Gets the windshield wipers, and that's plenty of meter to work with. Will they be oh able to make God. this verse worth it? The or Fortis here is so scary. Will Marvello snuff out the chance? The 5K is going to make it more than worth it. I hit with the Quentin Tarantino. Oh, Rock isn't able to pick up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see, let's see here. This is a barrage. Hard knockdown, positive bonus for Marvello situation that we have seen before going cross up They're trying to bring him to the corner or just go for the reset i respect it get a bit more damage force an option out of sq is going to be a successful yrc and just another clean throw do it again oh, up there it is. again goes high catches them going high and good block on the low from marvello but finds a chance to burst See, look at this. Mar SQ, the comeback queen, when she is down and cornered, this is when she really comes back swinging. Oh boy, it's happening. Everyone lock in. We might have a comeback on our hands, like we said, whenever she is down 2-0. That's when it feels like we really start to see SQ shine. Oh, man. I mean, Marvello just needs one more to get this run back here, but SQ is looking to lock in a legendary run here in TNS. It's a battle of wills. Yeah, it's like, I feel like the storylines they have just been so... Have it so crazy. It's like, I feel like, you know, it's like we have... Obviously, MFC are going to run back to TNS. We have Nine Moons coming out here, and we have Marvello trying to avenge his fallen brother, Rat. We have SQ trying to make a legendary loser's run. No matter who wins, I think we're in for a treat. There we go, gets the counter hit with the 6P, pushing SQ all the way through the glass. Positive bonuses on deck, but SQ nearly has 100 meter as well. Oh boy, this is gonna be a big pickup. What in the world are we doing with that conversion? Take right, him to the corner to the answer. You gotta watch out for the beta blade. No, we, okay, we just go for the 6P. Oh no. Uh oh, this should kill here. For SQ, yet another round in what could be a potential comeback here. A little counter on the 5H, gets the burst out of Marvello really early on. Yes, especially in this round two. If SQ is able to find her way out, we could see a really bad spot here for Marvello. Not quite able to get the side switch. Has a DP oh, no. and is able to block. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> the DP no! Oh, oh no. What have I oh, done? Oh man. The commentator's curse coming through for SQ. And now I've tried finding her way out. Barely able to withstand it. And now Marvello has another chance to try to keep us up in this one. Beautiful backdash there on the wild assault attempt for Marvello. And SQ takes it all the way to game five. The oh. comeback is real. It was looking like a clean 3 0 for. Marvello, but as we move on here, we got a first to one to try to close out this losers finals. It's really a battle of who wants it more. 
Um, just going on to face MFCR, who is sitting comfortably in winner side of Grants. Oh my goodness, he's sitting there watching it from his throne as the king. Trying to see who his next potential victim could be. And it's looking like they are both putting on an incredible show right now. Go round star the dash hockey coming out from Marvello gets whiff punish and opts to spend the burst trying to get that early momentum. Oh yeah, I gotta say, Symphony for the first one is kind of sick. Oh wow, not quite getting the conversion off the shirt can get him damn close. And now locked down in the corner. That risk gauge is absolutely massive. Able to find his way out. Great DP from Marbello and the throw. We are getting things started here for the Chip Nation. Gets the, the command grab. What a we close flash. Oh, oh, he's going to be blocked, but you can't block a throw. OTG with the windshield wiper set point for SQ. Oh my goodness, we are seeing it happen live. We, this is, might be the closest set of the day. Reverse 3 0 on the table for SQ. But Marbello is not out of this one yet. You see the advantage chain coming out right now. One hit will lead to massive damage for Marbello's ship. Anything will do it. Just one last touch. It's blinking. But the press from SQ. The bravery to press 2S in the face of full risk. Wow. What? a way to get out of there by SQ and now she is completely in the driver's seat. Marbello has to find his way out. That's it. Knowing how little Hell Chip has, this could be it with the Winter Wipers and it is the reverse sweep is complete for SQ. All right, it's oh, time wow. to jump into it. With no odds? Wow, you got to be a you got to be a real SQ believer. <laughs> Honestly, if you if you're typing two in the chat, come on over here. Mankind come over to this Twitch chat. Bet on your girl and say that she is going to win the whole thing. Here we go. Early burst from SQ. It's all right. Trade 100 for your 50. Oh, God. honestly, if I'm MFCR, I will take that. Shout out to Marvello for the raid. Incredible run, my friend. Yeah, I love you, Marvello. Great stuff tonight. What an honor commentating your matches, my friend. But we have then we have a pass this and move on to the 2S aerial hit. Does SQ have to confirm? Just gonna keep it simple and hope that this kills. Not even close though, has one more situation. Oh, that'll do it though. Yeah, pretty dominating first round there. 60 Animal coming through with the 13 months. Thank you so much. 13 months over a year of TNS support. Something to be applauded for sure, just like the pressure by MFCR. They are clicking right now. He gets the frame trap, catches the back dash from SQ. These IBFDs trying to push Leo out. The Leo has so many advancing moves, right? It's difficult to keep him out even with the IBFDs. There's the fast RC into the full confirm. Goes for the reset here to make sure we get the kill. All right, goes for the overhead. And that'll be enough to take that round. We're tied about one round apiece, and we are final round of the first game. Something tells me that this is going to set the tone for the entire tournament. Oh, tries to call the DP, isn't quite able to get there, and MFCR is able to go on another bullet train run <laughs> until SQ calls it out. And there we go, DP. Into the back turn overhead, hitting with the counter at 100 meter here on MFCR's side. That's going to be game number one in his favor, sending yeah. out the fan city. Yeah, it's like we already know that that's not going to drop. MFCR telling y'all to use renewable energy with the wind power right there, taking game number one. And now SQ, the mountain to climb to complete this crazy run gets even higher, but the gap between MFCR and another TNS victory in the tournament grows smaller. Remember though, we know SQ, she really turns it on, locks in when she's down 2-0. That is Shin SQ. We haven't gotten to that point yet.
Man, but man, something tells me that it will be coming soon. Let's see if MMCR can keep this consistency up. Round start, backdash is great, a little bit of space, goes right back on in for the close slash. Oh man, the risk is getting cranked like crazy now. Any hit from MMCR is going to be huge damage, and there it is. And the drift upwards too, to make sure that we can just get a little bit of extra juggle on there. Oh, look at it, look at some kind of reaction. You can just tell the fear that MMCR is absolutely instilling in SQ right now. Oh, this is definitely gonna kill. 100%. No doubt about that one. Perfect here from MSCR. Three rounds to end this story. Yes, as you said. As you said there, like the, the Cinderella run has to come to an end. The clock has to strike midnight. And something tells me that it has struck midnight in Florida. MFCR is trying to finish this thing. Oh, we're well past midnight now, my friend. But here we go. <laughs> 50 meter available. It's building up. There's the throw. No RC. Overhead. No, look at the patience there. Yeah, maybe you wanted to try and call something out with the counter. But being incredibly patient. Trades with the 2K there. Oh, oh I thought he got the conversion. Nice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not playing Street Fighter. This is not Street Fighter 3. Evo's a long ways away, my friend. Oh, but these trades aren't doing SQ any favors here. 5D oh, hits! This is a huge the... opportunity. They're not gonna quite be able to kill, but hard knockdown will be just enough for SQ to try to get something started. Oh, and the 2K wow. reaching out just far enough to catch the back dash there from SQ. Right. Leo, so blessed with those buttons. Yeah, his buttons are just so incredible, especially for some of these situations, like you saw, the 2K literally catching the backdash. Like, I mean, listen, who who else is doing that on the 2K, man? But here we go. Yeah, man, that 2K is so strong, right? 2K going into 6K is also a really good tool, right, for uh, for Leo being able to move forward with that 6K. Oh, but yeah. this is it, 2-0, MFCR. This could be the last match of this tournament, or is SQ going to make the miracle comeback? Now, we have seen this comeback before against an equally skilled player in Marvello. Will SQ be able to make that run? Early burst from MCR. We've seen that pretty consistently here in this set. Oh, man. Sitting here back in the neutral game. The slashes are coming out. But down a sword against MFCR is a bad place to be. Ooh, there we go. Oh, goes goes yeah. with the late Marabato. Able to do a nice chunk of damage. You see, MFCR oh, no. is really just having that, that one-track mind of moving in, going forward. Don't stop. Yep, holding W is MFCR trying to add another letter to his name. And D could be added in there as well with the charge dust to close it out. And this is tournament point now for MFCR. Oh, man. MFCR has one more round to try to close this one out. But SQ is showing that she can get violent her damn self, taking it through the wall with the Morbato. Goes for the safe jump option here. MFCR not going to bite, though, with the flash kick. There, it finally comes out. Had no, meter back, had no meter to back it up either, which is insane. All right, then force the burst out of SQ. Has 100 meter now. So it's not going to be quite too bad. What a conversion off of the callout. MFCR, no hero burst. This is just going to be straight through the wall. Yeah, going to be straight death. We, didn't, we don't have the meter, right, to make that hero burst worth it. Maybe if we had 50 meter or 75 meter, we could have gone for it. But yep. it's not worth it in that scenario. Simply, simply how it works, just keep it. For a situation like now, the wear is looking better. Oh, try to use the oh, 6H no. to catch the backdash. SQ is nearly able to avoid it. Wow, calling it up between 2K, 2D. And now, the situation is not where you want to be. Give me those plus frames. Oh, why is that plus? <laughs> oh, I don't know why. It's... Call okay. it the back dash. Oh, and he's a fire switch. Off the sides, PRC, BRC, oh, excuse me, into gosh. the gamma ray. Is it enough? Will we see it again? It is more than enough. It is two to one for MFCR, but we've seen this before. The last time that SQ was down 0-2, we saw three games straight. 
I'm telling you, the SQ factor. When she is backed into a corner, she is dangerous. Oh my goodness. It feels like it feels like she just gets the power of the moment that she's in situations like this. The plot armor is too strong. Here we go. Nice whip punish on the 6P attempt, but we try to immediately go for the 2-8, getting ourselves whip punished. Going to do a nice little save jump there. I respect it instead of going for the hard knockdown. And you see now trying to incorporate a little bit more strike, or excuse me, a little bit more throw into our strike throw game. ERC, yep, gets clipped low. Thought the fuzzy was coming. Oh man, SQ is heating up once again. Look at the dominance displayed in this round and blocks the burst for her troubles. Put it in the bag. It's looking like MCR is on the back foot once again. SQ performs best when she's under pressure. And the flip forward to make sure you can close the gap and get the pickup off of the sword explosion. Beautiful routing here. Hard knockdown. Positive bonus. What's it going to be? Goes for the overhead. Oh, wow. Maybe didn't get the sword toss off like they wanted. The DB from MSCR and no meter on the side of SQ. How are they going to be able to close this one out? Oh, no. The CD comes out. Cross is back over. The and challenge on the axe kick. No fear. SQ wants this so bad. Yeah, not going to quite be able to kill. Has one more chance for MFCR. Otherwise, SQ is going to take us to another game five. Surprise against the landing. Oh, YRC. Great YRC from SQ. Put him in the corner. Plus, and gets the 2K 2D as, as MSCR tries to mash. We are going to another game five. Yeah, dying with burst there as well. There we go. Chat, that is 12 set. It's like we're going to be 12 set wins very, very soon. The reset could happen. Game five, though. We saw this before. Will she be able to do it again? One game away from resetting the bracket here. SQ has had brutal matches leading up to this. Oh, getting things started off hot there with that counter hit, far slash. That 5k is honestly putting in so much work. I feel like if she just needs to stop MCR from dashing up and just trying to get in there immediately, she can start that 5k with relatively low risk and a pretty good amount of reward. Yeah. Wow, we spent oh! all of our meter to try and go for a throw and lost all of it. Wow. Oh no. All the meter is now gone and is able to finally get that punish on 5k that he has been looking for with no repercussions. Uh, MFC card is, is he is constructed differently. He is simply simply might be the best. I don't know. Oh, but here we go. Okay, 2D. Past RC. Yeah, I like the burst there from MFCR. Oh, that's blocking out. Ram has no swords. If I'm SQ, I do not want to be here right now. Might not kill. Gonna put him in the corner and get the parry on the super. Good God! What a read on the parry! And SQ is going to the wall despite the valiant effort. It is still set point tournament point for MFCR. SQ does have burst available though. How fast are we gonna spend it? There it is, right on Q. Speak of the devil. Wave punish on the 2D. Gets the reset, gets the throw. A couple more hits for MFCR to take the tournament. One more touch. Here we go, run through attempt. No, wake up 2K 2D from SQ. Again, oh. no fear. You have to watch out for the possibility of a flash kick though with 100 meter available. Oh, you've got to be so careful. And no super, maybe wants to maintain the meter. Gets the whip punish and catches the Lord of Auto. We are going to last game. Oh last God. game, what looked like a wash. What is the set king jobber? I cannot believe he backdashed there. MCR took that personally. Mortal counter. What an air juggle. Oh my God. Both of these players are trying so hard to keep themselves in this one. At the very least, they're oh. getting game five. This is not going to kill. One more mix up for oh. MCR to try to take it. 100 meters. Going out. There it is. 
Berserker what? Barrage, MFCR is your TNS champion. Wow, MFCR closing it out in a crazy grand finals. We thought we were gonna see SQ try to run it 